Good evening. Welcome to another exciting adventure on a Thursday night. I'm joined by my two positive co-hosts that are not negative in any way whatsoever. Well, we're just going to have a happy day, right? Happy, how, happy how long day does day. it have to be on before I can swear? <laughs> <laughs> I think about, what, 30 seconds or a, or a minute? Oh, I don't God. know. We're not monetized. The bleep you're talking about. <laughs> it's, yes, Marania, this is about comic books. No. I, I, Breen, you're gone. Wait. No, you're staying. Pun it's more of a punishment. <laughs> gotta gotta give him, keep him around for when uh, Zach shows up. I was happy when Zach shows up. <clears throat> punishment. Oh. It's, it, it's funny that you say punishment. That is one of my back issues. It involves punishment. But anyway, um, I'll just get this <laughs> show going. And I hope that everybody here is reminded that if you have noticed, we do have super chat ability. So if you want to insult us through and pay us money to do it, you're welcome to. Don't beg. That's I'm not that's e -beg. I'm not e begging. <laughs> you're you're v begging. Yeah, z v begging. <laughs> v beg. R D V begging. <laughs> yeah. You can take so, it to the bank. You can take it to the bank. So how many Comics, do you have this week to review? Uh, let's see six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten books. Yeah, plus The Walking Dead, movie makes 11. So we'll, we'll go through a quick, quick. Well, how about that, Mel? It, isn't that exciting? Who would have thought? It's <laughs> gather around, kids, while Uncle RDV <laughs> tells us how great the comic book industry is. In 2023, I backed it up a year or so. Wrong. Starting with one of the best books to come out from from Kirkman, The Walking Dead Deluxe. Issue 86. It's a banger. Yes. Yeah. Uh, honestly, I've been loving these David Finch covers, and I love the detail on this. Now, if you're squeamish, yeah. Yeah, but did, isn't that didn't they do that in um, what was it? Big time or big game or whatever that miniseries Miller just did. Nemesis or something. Yeah, I think Nemesis did that. Someone, or, someone but, took. Yeah, yeah. Hit but, girl just. But you know, you know, see, but this is this isn't uh, an uh, original cover though. This is because this this is the original. This, this is a cover that they had back in the day. But I mean, but I'm pretty sure there was something before this. There might have been a Punisher book or something like that. Was it maybe Marvel or is it oh, a, no, not? Not even Marvel Max would have done. It, that. it had to been it had to been any book. But I know, I know, I know. I've seen this before. That's the, before Walking Dead. I sort of like the thing that it's got those little hangers on there, the little little strands of blood coming down. Well, I mean, they have the that's brains. What yes. kind of sick freak are you? Yeah, I was in the Navy, so that he's in, he's in Alaska. We're safe. So you say you are in the Navy? <laughs> yep. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Uh, we are safe from Fargo. <laughs> All right, number 10 for this week. Number 10. I, the only thing that's good about this is that the cover, is, it's a reflection of the previous issue's cover. It's a mirror image. Uh, we're basically, for those fresh, fresh your guys' memory, they were playing a game, uh, and basically Blair and Mortal took control of the, of the sentient book. We're playing game, and then so strange... It, it, being the doctor, he is, doesn't want to destroy the book, but he pretty much appeals to the sentient being saying, you know, and has him basically like set the four innocent kids free and end the battle. And he says, I know someone who actually would actually pawn the kid because in order to survive this book, it needs someone to play. And he has someone that can play. And that's General Strange. You know, he said, since you basically have no purpose, this will give you something to do. So General Strange at the end agrees to do it. Uh, I mean, it was this was hokey. I mean, really, really hokey. Black Cat did not need to be there. She was just there because they needed a, a thief, a rogue. The storyline, you know. Well, in, never mind. Yeah, I know. Like I said, and Clea gets the punch at the end. Of course she does. Yeah. Because like, that, that, Clea's got a long history of uh, physical violence. So, so does America Chavez. Well, she does, actually. <laughs> she punched Hitler. <laughs> All right, like I said, it was a very 
med k book jet okay strikes again <laughs> med k yeah i mean artwork's okay it's kind of bland but i mean i don't know i guess it's like i say it's a homage to people who like dnd mm. but i don't know how much they care for this book or even even know this book exists all right number nine this week number nine this bench of the moon knight number four where they reveal who the moon knight is who is the moon knight the moon knight is someone you would not expect and it kind of upset me because i told i I told uh zach about this if it's if it's a fourth personality i'm a little less annoyed but if it's someone that's not moon knight personating him I'm even more pissed, and that's and what the latter. That's what it is. Um, you know, I need to look that person up. You know what, yeah. I don't know who it is. And... Well, I might be able to help if somebody tells me. This was shocking, though. It's the shroud. No. Yeah. They brought him back. He's posing as he's been posing as Moon Knight. Uh. And and I, I just want Mark because it's called Moon Knight, not called everyone but Moon Knight. So eventually, I mean, I hope they will bring him back. But I'm sick of this Marvel where we're gonna put somebody in his place. So call it, you know, that title character. I'm done with the, that crap. At least the shroud goes back as far as Moon Knight. Yeah. Of, of, of that's not that high up on the dumb things they've done. No, no. I mean, I, I could see. They could, if, if they well, no, they could easily could have replaced him with that girl, the vampire chick, or 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 somebody that nobody can. But I said, yeah, Shroud, you have to kind of know your Marvel history a little bit. Um, Super, uh, and, 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 uh, you know, here's the here's the thing. Then. Actually, his his original thing was and nothing to do with Spider Man. His first appearance was in Supervillain Team Up, where he was trying to kill Doctor Doom, and he he formed an a, a he allied himself with Namor and he was around that book for about five or six issues. Then he went out West and he had more of an association with spider woman. He really didn't have that much to do with spider man other than and you his, eventually you have to, you know, that mini series they had the 90 called the shroud. There's a yeah. pre issue series that spider man was in the book. Yeah. That, um, that's, 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 that's my little bit knowledgeable. That's my, that's my, uh, my fault. My bad. His, I, I, I figured he was just like a one and done character, and you never saw him again. His, um, his origin was Batman's origin, so that's kind of a nod and a wink that he'd be playing the character that, that a lot of people say is Marvel's Batman. But you know, I said that's, I, I, you know, I'm not a reader of the book, but I suspect I would have been a lot. I, I'd, I'd have looked at it and said, oh, okay, I can buy that. I mean, I mean. I don't like the idea of it, Mark having a fourth personality. I can see Marvel doing that and be like, oh, I don't want that. He's already got three. You know, it's now, is, like, is Mark kind of, like still around? I mean, yeah. will he eventually become Moon Knight again? Actually, the, if you want to say, if you want to have a Mr. Knight, that'd be four personalities, right? Because there's Moon Knight, Mr. Knight, aren't those two separate? No, no, no. If, it, if there's going to be another Moon Knight, it's going to be Misty Knight. <laughs> All right, all right. Um, my next book, all they left was a full cover, and I wanted to read the issue because it's done by Steve Niles. Red Sonia, Empire of the Damned. So, end up paying. Run nice eight bucks. knife. Run about eight bucks for this. Eight? Yeah. Wow. For the discount. Is it the O shiny cover? I mean, it's the, the yeah, I just said it's it says it's a full cover. Joshua Middleton full cover. Uh, <laughs> Josh Milton, but uh, it just kind of felt bland to me. You know, they tell you a story about this uh, this land or this kingdom that was ra- uh, this wizard attacked, killed everybody, stole their souls, and then there's all this basically like loot there. And Red Sonny is told this by a guy she meets at, at a bar who tries hitting on her first, but then they gotta get in a fight with the guards because the bars be closed because it's un, but un- it's. Oh, unbecoming! It's it's a it's a besmirchment across the king's land because it's very rowdy. They don't like it. Uh, so and 
the art, like I said, the art isn't really that great either. It's by Alessandro um, uh, Moroso. When Red Sonia looks like this, she looks like. That's. That's uh, really. The no. No, I know is what you're talking about. It looks like somebody will be drawing something like Gru. That Doesn't looks she like look, a tranny. You know, she, you know what she looks like? Dakota Kai. <laughs> I, I don't watch enough WWE either to. I know who that is, but I don't. I wouldn't recognize. He knows who that is. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Like I said, what the hell is this crap? She looks like a female version of that Steve Martin character from. Uh, oh, from that the movie. good thing is I, I can flip it because it's full color. <laughs> God, speak, speaking speaking of Steve Martin, I have a friend but, named Steve Martin. But I mean, he there is going here though, hmm. and some ass cheeks and so. So they yeah, they really I mean the I was I was shocked though and Brent you could keep talking if you want to no so he's the, got a he plays a banjo like the other Steve Martin and does radio and yeah. he, he he has seventy one thousand Twitter followers now and I bet you every bit of half of them think they're following the I actor. Mean, that first <laughs> that first page in the bar shows a guy with his pants down having sex with a girl on on the bar counter. Nice. That's kind of barbaric, hardcore. So, barbaric, barbaric. Yeah. Ass, but, uh, uh, uh. There's a lot. There's a lot of ass cheek display on there. So they, at least they didn't put her in a freaking. Uh, Who is the artist on that book? Alessandro or Alex Alexander Alessandro or Alex, Alessandro? Um, oh no, Alessandro Amoroso. Hmm. Um, Steve Niles, Thirty Days a Night, is the writer, and I gotta say, this is probably the best book that he's actually worked on because. Hmm. Uh, art on his his book Thirty Days of Night sucks. I mean, this is a, that's a upset, but um, so they end up breaking out, and the whole thing is that they're gonna go after this uh, the, the uh, until uh, riches. It's basically a very generic plot. Someone says, "Oh, I heard about this this land here. There's there's uh, riches here, and that guy dies while they're escaping, and then she basically takes a map and then she leaves. So it was like it's very." Cut and dry, you know, cut and paste. You know, the art was slightly better than Kickstarter. <laughs> right, you know, but yeah. Sort of looked like she got bukkake at the end, that picture that they showed. Right, right. Like I said, it was it, it, it's an okay issue, but I'm kind of upset because I got stuck with the full cover, so I had to pay more. It's like a $2 issue. What's up, Aaron? Uh, Alani Barrett? Watch these over on Twitch, and uh, hello to Undead Quinn, uh, Marania, and Jay Lucian, and Zach Richmond, who are also watching over on YouTube because we're streaming to both YouTube and Twitch. So watching on Twitch, yeah. Oh uh, no, we're just talking about general comic books, you know. The Marvel, you ask about the Marvel franchise. The uh, the Red Sony I just referred to. Was not Marvel. That's this is your dynamite. So, and hello to Zach. He's fashion be late. Y'all know it's this. It's kind of early for. Uh... Yeah, I was about to say I'm actually earlier than I normally am. Yeah, I, I don't understand how Zach gets here so early when he says he, he can't start the later. Uh, because it was a very light night with Bible study tonight. Lesson didn't go so. Sending was at a minimum. Sending was at a minimum. That, are there more people that just didn't come up to the youth group? It's kind of it's kind of light. It's kind of dark. No, this is, no, no, no. Youth group is Wednesday nights. Oh, okay, okay. This is my like, men's group. There's there's less men. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, spring break. A lot of them. A lot of them are dads. They took their families out of town for vacation. So, so it, was really so it, it wasn't raining men tonight. It was not raining men. Tonight. It hasn't yeah, been sure. raining at all. It's been. You said it was uh, seventy three degrees. degrees number six skies. for me. Actually, sorry, sorry, number seven for me is Geiger. She won. Zach, I know you like this, but it just felt like the Geiger I read before. So didn't, no, there's nothing really That's new. That's fair. I was thinking about it after the fact. I was like, this is the third time, his third number one. So I can yeah. kind of understand where you're coming from. <laughs> I just, I just yeah. want you two to argue. All right, fight. No, nope, I'm not going to fight. My I mean, is still you, you're getting recovered. Gary Frank art in this, which I love. It is gorgeous. Art. You know. 
Uh, very fallout. And you did kind of you gave ex exactly the whole plot of the whole issue in that. I said some guy, some town. I didn't do names or anything. Dagger so. goes to town. This town's being raided by uh, bandits, you know, you know, and he shows up and then kicks her ass. And they're like, "Oh my gosh, we didn't know no idea you were the glowing man when you first showed up." But thank you. But keep your distance. We don't want to be tied. <laughs> um, and then, of course, and then, I mean. It is brutal though, but I said the art is great about this. I really like it, but the story is just—I—it's the same story. Well, at least this one had the difference of the guy wanting to, you know, change his ways. Yeah, 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 yeah. definitely. And seemingly sincere about it. Yeah, yeah. And like his whole change of heart, where before he's like go away, and then he ends up like saying, "Okay, whatever, yep, you're yep. with me now." Like I said. The, the thing that's going for me for Geiger is the art work for me the most. Where the art story is, is compared to Junkyard Joe and some of the other ones, it's just kind of the, it's it's kind of like isn't Junkyard Joe also Gary Frank? Or is yes. That a different yes. Okay. Yes, but it, it's Junkyard Joe is a more fast, not that faster pace, but more. Oh, I, I would say it's it, more interesting. It, it is. It had the kids. The kid factor yeah. is what really did it for me. Yeah, and, I'm not. I'm not trying to denigrate Geiger, but um, I mean, I, you know, I, I Geiger has the dog. Um, <laughs> I I didn't start on the Geiger verse until Junkyard Joe. That's fair. And I went yeah. back and, and read some read the Geiger, but I'm a bigger fan of Junkyard Joe also. But yeah, that's fair. I, I mean, I Geiger's not even my favorite one to be honest. No, I mean, I, like saying, Geiger's I, the Geiger is the reluctant hero that's basically. Uh, Kind of feeling sad from Scuff because he misses his family. And it's like you feel a little more about that. He's kind of like the Victor Freeze that's be slowly becoming a hero. Yeah. Because he just wanted to be left alone, like Victor Freeze. <laughs> I was just like, we're just taking Batman villains, turning them into heroes. Where does he come from? Where does he go? Who do we know? Don't but, um, Joe. but for a first issue, yeah, it's like I said, that's you're getting all, it, it, it's like I I, I don't want to spend the whole the next Whatever, how many issues they're gonna do, how many volumes of him just being like mopey. That's the thing I don't want. It's like it's just kind of depressing. The dog is is cool. He's like the dog's like more beans again. He's like Brr. he's like I know. Hey, we can't eat the other animals. They're radiated. You know, you know, which kind of I kind of kind of chuckle, but also I'm like the dog's got radiation. And I'm pretty sure if he eat another animal, it's radiation. It's not gonna kill him. It's got two freaking heads for crying out loud. But uh. Like I said, it was okay. Um, I mainly got it because I wanted to connect the covers. <laughs> mm. Ivan Wright's awesome connecting covers. The one that beat out Geiger because it's I've been having more fun with this has been Turtles Saturday morning. Uh, I didn't know what to make the first issue, the first part of this. There's two stories, which I thought was kind of funny for being a one shot here. It's it's it's, it's a little more expensive. It's seven bucks. Um, it's continuing the main story uh, from the last issue, the last issue storyline where uh, the uh, sword, the cut reality, got broken and it's causing rifts. And April gets zapped. We get we get the meet. Uh, well, Indiana Duck. She gets chased by a boulder. He saves her. There's, it's basically right as a lark. <laughs> he's going in there, and he's being hounded by uh, by these uh, these goons. The goose, they're goose stepping. Yeah, it's Nazis. Yeah, it's a little slight number towards the Indiana Jones. And meanwhile, back at home, they're trying to like find her, try to get her back to the portal. Um, there's even a callback. So those who read the crossovers of turtles, there's the portal they have that goes to different dimensions. And so they're dealing with that crap going on there. Eventually, uh, she ends up uh he's able to go back to her own time. We're, we're to mention, and then, then so the next story is well, it's kind of the same story, but they, they merged it. It's two stories, but they merged it. This is where I thought we we're gonna run into the Jenica because I got scared, but we run into some girl named Mona Lisa, and then we get an origin story. It's kind of similar, like Jenica's. I was like, and that's where you kind of like were losing me. But apparently, she was mutated by this this villain. Yeah, and Raphael's got a crush on her. And pretty much they beat the villains. Some dude's got a giant uh, robo suit, and then they realize that he's got a battery pack 
and they pull the battery pack out and the suit no longer works anymore. And that's kind of, it's very, I said, this is very aimed towards children. So, I mean, and it's, it's I usually view these as being the safe books. <laughs> unless, unless it's Marvel or DC to Young Justice. But, uh, but overall, I mean, I was more peaked because I have, I have had this action figure of this duck, but I have no idea who the hell he is. So that's kind of why I got this. I mean, I've also been enjoying these. It's been fun. This is based off the cart Christian series, which has been innocent and wholesome action and a lot of comedy in it. So I kind of try to get away from more of the serious drama stuff. I mean, maybe that's why I didn't like Geiger as much, because Geiger's more like a serious book. Yeah. But that's my number six of this week. Top yeah, five. Geiger has about as many laughs as an episode of 24. I never watched 24. Which means they're, that when they do pop up, you notice. There weren't many laughs. <laughs> yeah, but when they happened, you, you knew. When, you knew when, was it, when was there ever a laugh in 24? When right. they nuked Los Angeles? <laughs> that was pretty funny. I don't think All that right. was meant to be, but. No, but. <laughs> Well, first of all, I just saw this. Is anybody going to pick this up at all? Joe Kelly, in the interest at all? I probably will. Adam Kubert? I probably will, yeah. Andy, Adam Kubert, yeah. Joe Kelly, definitely. I would get it for just Joe Kelly. Yeah, it's coming, it's coming out in May. But um, I love it says Deadpool, uh, Wolverine, World War Three, WB3. So, yeah, yeah. But this is my number five this week. GM D. Mateus. Um, it's a throwback issue before the Green Goblin when Norman was still experimenting on his goblin formula and basically back before he's met because Peter said it's like before I met uh Harry and uh and uh, Gwen Stacy, you know. Before Harry you know, met Sally. This, this when this all happened, you know, because he had met him as Peter Parker, but I knew him as Spider Man because he actually ended up saving Harry. From one of uh, Norman's creations that basically tries to attack and kidnap him, <clears throat> but uh, it is, like I said, it does capture a lot of the harder too. With uh, as far as um, Aunt May, the old bird just won't die. I, uh, Jack, did you read this at all? No, I didn't pick it up. No. So basically, the gist I got for this, he says, you know, the day I'm, you know, he says uh, we've both been lying ever since Uncle Ben died, pretending we were okay, that our hearts weren't shattered. And May would talk about everything, but Ben and me, I'd crack lame jokes, and she'd pretend to be amused. I think we were trying to protect each other, or maybe, maybe we were trying to protect ourselves. But the yeah, so that's kind of the dialogue there too. And he realizes he needs money, so that he goes up to his, uh, a bookie here, trying to get jobs. But he said after after with James just started printing uh, the, the stuff on him, he'll never get work in showbiz again. But then the guy helps him out. He sends him over um, to a birthday party for kids, and he and he gets upset because the kids don't like him. But then he realizes that here's a struggling mom, and this is you know, and you know, and he runs himself with Aunt May, and he says like, oh, "I'm gonna be a jerk," you know, and he does it for free because the kid, the kid had just lost his father, and he takes the kid for a web swing. So it's kind of like a, like a not a, not a Roger Stern, but I mean, kind of you get that those, those, you know, the kid collected Spider Man. Was that the one that um was it Wes or Perch posted the the yeah. image of it today? It was actually it reminded yeah. it me was of Wes. that. Yeah, yeah, it was that. It reminded I'm totally me of that down with the book, but yeah. yeah, it's like I said, I'm I'm mixed on it too. But he talks about how he doesn't know his own uh, strength. He's afraid to punch anybody because the last time he put the guy, small town crook, in a gas station into a, he almost paralyzed him. So but, he's um, afraid. So he's afraid to do anything. And of course, it's it's just, it's just kind of rehashing. Uh, Gwen and Harry knew each other, and Harry's dad is a dick. <laughs> so, what? but they weren't dating or like that. They were kind of friends. Here's the, <coughs> here's the birthday party scene. Like I said, I don't know what the make of this book. Otherwise, I mean, it's it is a heartfelt attempt. It's not a cheap uh, plug, you know, or cheap at all uh, book put out there. Gwen, uh, Harry takes Gwen to a party at old because he used to go to a private school and he never there was a go there. He stopped going because they were he got bullied. So Gwen was with him. Some guy is drunk, hits on her, and says, oh, "I'm so sorry." And she basically says, "No skate, thank you," and pushes him away. And that's when we get to see this Goblin guy. He's the first beta test for the Green Goblin serum, but it turned him into a monster. Looks like a Hobgoblin. Yeah. 
And he's forced to basically, he wants this, someone, someone basically wants, he's, he's this mysterious figure in the very beginning of the book, approach him, says, you mean the only thing you need to do? So, we, you know, and he's trying to kidnap Harry Osborne. And of course, Peter doesn't want to fight him because Peter doesn't want to hurt him. He's afraid, you know, if he hits him. He's still kind of figuring out his, because he's like 15 years old at this point. This is just about a couple weeks right after Ben died. Mm. Uh, and, I mean, there's a lot, of, a lot of cool art in here dynamic stuff because i was when I, when they said oh the goblin before green goblin was the first goblin i was like really let's not do this you know but so this is the wolverine and deadpool world war three yeah it is it's, but it's it, spider-man yeah <laughs> and it has venom in there too look okay that's yeah The Wolverine Deadpool oh. was, was an ad. Oh, okay. I, 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 <laughs> I didn't know if he was going to tell you or not. Okay. I was seeing how far I could go, but I like I felt bad. <laughs> of course. You got feelings? So when when Peter returns home, um, you know, he after fighting, he got a fight. Aunt May basically, he says, like, oh, you know, it's kind of stuff. He's like, and she basically goes off on him. She yells at him. Now, such- that was different. He's like, oh, it's another. It's basically says it's nothing, and me. I got in a little fight, no big deal. She's like, no big deal, no big deal. You know, uh, my husband is dead. My nephew comes home beaten and bruised like some hum- hoodlum. Uh, and you have the audacity to tell me it's no big deal, Peter Benjamin Parker. How could you be so thoughtful? Or sorry, not thoughtful, thoughtful. How dare <laughs> uh, you? It's so irresponsible, so unbelievably cruel. She slams, and then he say, like I said, you see him kind of like this. I was just like, I don't. It's like. I don't recall Emmy ever yelling at him in any of the books. So, and then this is a huge spoiler. If you're gonna, if you are gonna invest in this book, um, you need to turn away. Just turn away right now. Uh, I'll let me put the little banner on there. Here, where, where is it? So you know, there's spoilers going because this may make you piss more than anything else. Because in this book, it's revealed in the end who's. He's who this go- goblin guy was working for. Emily Osborne. Norman's wife, who's thought to be dead. So I know Breen's like, that's kind of <laughs> I'm like, real. I'm like, I don't know where they're going with this, but yeah. She's like, she basically bring my son. That's all she says, you know. And uh so we, yeah, you know, that's our deal. You need to get my son, and then I'll, then I'll. Okay. okay. Other than the fact that this book tried way too hard, um, they have gone back and retconned that Norman was a normal, nice guy. That something happened in his lab that caused the chemical imbalance that led to him becoming the Green Goblin. But this whole time, his wife that's supposed to have been dead this whole time is plotting against him? That doesn't make any sense. Again, I said, you've got your Kung Fu grip Gwen earlier in the issue. Yep. Harry, of course. I wanted to like this book. And there's some things that aren't bad about it. But that last page is what I don't know if I'm going back. Yeah, and, and, well, in Aunt May's, you know, overblown response, it's like, you know, and, and just trying to turn what was just, you know, Peter making quips because he loves his aunt mm-hmm. into something so much deeper. Yeah. And then Aunt May going Dramat- off on yeah. him because he had a, you know, because yeah. because he had a puffy face. So, yeah, I'm sorry. I, I am a huge Jim Dematase fan. So- this was not. So is better. I want to touch on that scene with with Aunt May yelling at him. That reminds me of the Amazing Spider-Man Sony put, movie put Sony put out when she she she's got the BS. You know, I know something. You know, and she kind of that she did snap him that movie. If you recall, she kind of yelled at him because he was uh, sneaking out late and stuff. He knew he was having pro- problems. She yelled at him. But that was a younger that was a younger Aunt May though, and that was a movie. So, that was Sally Field Aunt May. That was actually my else, Aunt May. I like Sally. Getting tired of trying to squeeze as much retconning as you can 
into every nook and cranny of a character. Yep. I'm tired of it. Yep. Can we just target other characters? Leave by my Spider-Man alone. <laughs> yeah, you've got like a million C-list and B-list street characters you well, can do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. care about them, but so of course so they're all ball. They have to be Spider-Man, yeah. but it's, yeah. You could, you could go after 8-Ball. You could do Cloak and Dagger stuff. You've got all the new Warriors characters. Well, <clears throat> they're doing stuff yeah. with Night Thrasher. Yeah, which, okay which, with which new Warriors are you talking about? The, the, Magic the is special the special ones? <laughs> the special ones? Screen I'm time? Never, I'm never talking about the Kibble Smith new Warriors. Now, Kibble I will Smith. say, I mean, even though I've got a lot of problems with this book. Yeah. It, Jim DiMatteis can roll out of bed and write better than 99% of the people working at Marvel. That's today. true. That's, that's, true. A, that's what I was hoping for. And, and write better with a hundred than 100% of them with minimal effort. It just, I didn't like how, I mean, I just, it just felt like this one tried a little bit too hard to add too much to legacies that don't really have room to add anything more to. Um, yeah. I, I don't know. Like I said, it just, We'll, we'll see. I, yeah, I mean, I said, and as far as like I said, the, 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 you know, Norman's supposedly dead wife. I, again, like I said, that's just pick a continuity. Well, what are we going with? It's kind of like, cause, is, uh, nor, um, not Norman, but Harry says my mother died when I, when I was, when I was a baby. Yeah. You know, and, and, it's, I'm it's, sorry. It's, you're going for the dramatic thing, you know, and I, I honestly, Brian, I'm shocked this hasn't been explored before. Well, I, I can tell you this: you're going to come out of this, you know, rooting for Norman. <laughs> because I'm sorry if she's been away this whole time plotting revenge, not letting her son know she's alive. There are only two ways they can do this: either one, she's irrevocably evil, or two, they're going to say Norman was bad from from jump, and we know that's not the case. So they're yeah. either way they're going to you know. Yeah, but Marvel, are you allowed to have a mother be a bad person? It's you know what it reminds me of Lex Luthor's mom. That's what they're gonna do. Well, if they, now okay, if if she turns out to be the person that now if they would say that she arranged for the shit that turned Norman goo goo, yeah, then it becomes a you know, pretty good story. Yeah, but I just don't know that they'll be. I don't know if he, if a, if he thought of it, if he'd be allowed. And Norm, to do Norm may have said that she disappeared all these years ago, and he just it's just easier to tell Harry, you know, that she was dead. Because he, for all he knows, he thought she, she was dead because maybe he saw her die in an explosion. I don't know, whatever. But you know, she that, obviously but that's tro that trope's been done so many. She times. obviously knows Norman's alive. Yeah, I mean that. Yeah, you know, I mean Harry's, Harry's, Harry's alive, alive. So yes, there's no way to spin this. And, and not make her the villain. So the only I can think is that Norma doesn't know she's alive or at least around because she's in hiding. And she's using this guy, blackmailing I'll get you what you need to get in the, get into Osborne Security. I was going to get to the chemical or the antidote, turn you back to normal humans so you can go see your wife and kids. But first, got to bring me my son. That's what she says at the end. It right? also, so, yeah, wouldn't it? Uh, if, if Norman doesn't know she's alive, that that's an interesting wrinkle. Next issue. Your boy, Sandman. Sandman, we're gonna get sand in places it doesn't go or shouldn't go. All right, no one fits into any check boxes. Can uh, um, no one that fits into any check boxes can be permitted to be evil in comic books because if one check box character is evil, then every real person in that category is considered evil. Good point. Yeah, I, I was see, I was more annoyed by the fact that oh, we're, oh, we're gonna do this. There's the before the Green Goblin, there was a goblin before him. Yeah, that was th that, that was explained to my satisfaction because <laughs> that was kind of like clickbait, you know. But yeah, the but like I said the the yeah. Mrs. Osborne. I'm uh, I said that's gonna that's gonna need some explaining to. Yeah, um, I want to. Is is it a clone? <laughs> I doubt that. And how, it, how many how, how many issues is this miniseries? I don't know. That'd be five it, or it, six. It, it didn't oh, say it here. Um, well, you know, they could do it. It just gives you the giant one. It doesn't give you the. What is the shadow of the Green Goblin? Yep, yep, yep. I mean, I imagine five or six. Danny uh, Kazem is the editor. Do, do, do. 
Well, they could uh, probably do it in three. three. I see three issues. Michael Sta Maria is artist. Currently, they only have three issues up. Yeah. But, I mean, I do love the art here, though. That's the one thing I take away from this, so. The art's pretty good. He's, he's in the rain that, there. That, I love that, that picture. That Yeah, that's really good. That's him. He's like him just telling a story. That's what it is. He's it opens up Peter Parker. He's like, I'm going to tell you a story. It happened a long time ago that I've never told it a soul or anybody else before. And and even I didn't know uh, about most of this, uh, this stuff. It's basically, it's put together by pieces. He says, uh, here, where is the, where's the page? He says, my name is, he says, uh, yeah. To make, my name is Peter Parker. The story I'm about to tell you took a, took a took place a long time ago, less than a month after my uncle Ben's death. I pe I pieced it together from my own memories, firsthand accounts from some of the others others involved, news reports, and yes, uns uh, unsubstantiated rumors. So, like I said, I'll. It's something else I can get to. It wasn't a f horribly bad. <laughs> but it can get worse. But I, I gave it, I gave it up because that's the guy who uh, wrote the um, Bahaha, isn't it? Justice League uh, International. Oh, it, um, yeah. his his writing credits are you know, more than that. Yeah, days, in the thousands. Yeah. So I, as I said, I was like, no, in the I usually most of the stuff I've have written, I've read by him, I've liked. Yeah. So that's why I was like, I give it a shot, even though that tagline is like. Before the Garden Goblin, there was another guy. I was like, yeah, yeah well, yeah. Before this channel, there was another YouTube channel about comic books, but not as good. We're the only one. Subscribe now. All right, number four. Is that I'm enjoying this, man. Why am I hearing uh, Predator? I think it would be easy. <laughs> okay, it sounds like Predator. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, watch out, Zach. Uh, the continuation fight of uh, of Mattel versus uh, Superman in uh, Europe, and then look who's in there, it's Herbie. I'm just kidding, it's not Herbie, but he looks like him, like a thinner version. <laughs> or Jerry Lewis. So I mean, like you get you get him. He uses super breath to try and freeze him. I like, like, was kind of cool too. Often you see Superman using his, his super breath. Um, you don't but, see that too often. No. Unless it's like a gag or something. He's using his heat vision to help. Because basically when they're fighting, he's not he's gonna knock the building. People are freaking out. So he basically started fixing things mid-fight. He saved his family from getting destroyed. And by the end of the fight, pretty much all the Russians are cheering for Superman because he's been saving them while the other guy's trying to kill him. And I and I like I said. I've enjoyed the art on this. See, guys, even communists like America when America saves them and their home leaders. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. We get the little the little girl in uh, in the next in the the next page here. He's like, he's like, please, sir. You don't have to be mad. <laughs> Can I have another? Uh, yeah, because because uh, Superman says like, and I was like, you know, we don't have to fight. The whole thing is like, you know, man. Military shows up. They want to basically, uh, they're like, kill him, kill Superman. And he's like, no. And then you see Mattel actually uh, does something. He's like, he's like, he's, he's he says, uh, the kryptonite, uh, there will not be another, I will not allow. Because basically said, if you don't follow us, all the lies, because basically says, calls out the general, says, you lied to me. You lied to everybody here. It says, like, and the guy's like, you'll be, do, you'll do as your, I order, I'll replace you. He's like, there will not be another, I will not allow it. And, course superman knows he says he says like don't do it and he decides to fly up into space and basically nuke himself because you'll not allow this uh to fall into uh villain's hands but yeah i mean of course as you said we get superman it'd be great though if it was in russian <laughs> you couldn't read it what no no is it remember they did the carrots the little thing oh. yeah you know and of course, at the end, Perry's like, "Where's my front page? I don't have a front page." And then Superman shows up, and they get a little story. So, and then of course, at the end, everybody loves Superman. I was reading online; people were like, "Oh my gosh, now we have a white savior Superman again." I was like, "What?" 
Yeah, because social media was a mistake. Such a mistake. Because because Superman they're <clears throat> on saving people and Russia and and they're just like they'd hate the fact that he's a hero. Aren't, aren't they generally white in Russia he, too? He shouldn't be saving. He, he shouldn't be saving white people. He should that's save that's aside from the point, Bryn. I mean, yeah. come on. You know, and I I did have one two major problems with this book. One more thing, the <laughs> Columbo over there. No, no, no. You know what there were? <laughs> you, you know what those two major problems were? It was too short. Reading the story. This is great. This is great. Oh fuck! Here's a Wonder Woman promo. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is great. This is great. This is great. Ah oh, fuck! There's a Flash promo. Yeah. They yeah. promo. Maybe they're two worst books that aren't just straight up agenda. And I gotta see one page ads for them. You don't like this? Wasn't the third problem? I didn't even buy. You that didn't get a two. You didn't get the two-page ad for Nightwing's Legacy no, 300. Oh, oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Jesus God. <laughs> um, Nightwing gets two pages. Wonder Woman got one. I'm surprised. The very, the very the beginning of the book is Suicide Squad. That's the very first thing. As soon as you open the book, they show you the god awful Suicide Squad video game. Ugh, I'm actually, yeah, I'm, maybe, maybe House of Brainiac will be. See, see, at least the super Superman books. I'm not. Yeah, I'm actually I'm not going anywhere the near. Biggest the biggest problem girl. that Breen had is that I'm not going to read the Power Girl part, no. but all the other books I'll probably. Pick the biggest up. problem is, is that Breen get these days catchphrase. It's four Ks, there, bro. I see that, but I, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to do <laughs> it's it. It's all K out. I'm going to. Uh, Unlike you, Zach, you have a lot of three. Hey, 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 can we can we <laughs> laugh at Zach jokes tonight? Show him some respect. Okay, I respect him. I just like he's just, he's just showing me his little respect as possible. <laughs> yes. What's that joke? Show a little respect. I'm showing as little respect as possible. It's, I still respect you, just very little. No, it's just the way we do stuff in the military. The more you bust someone's balls, the more you like them. Well, it is yeah, Navy. You guys do bust balls. My mom said that girls did that when they like you. I didn't buy it then. I don't buy it now. <laughs> well, I would never pay for girls to do that form. Do that. Sorry. No, I That's wouldn't either. Do you think this is that comic book that y'all Number read? Number three. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't I Love Comics. We don't talk about busting nuts here. No, what's the- <laughs> <laughs> busting balls and busting nuts? No, what, was that, what was that book that you and Skip were both reading? It was like that girl that paid people to have them punch her, or people paid her. Oh, that was oh, hit, oh. hit girl. That's what you were. That's no, what no, it no, was. no, it was hit me. Hit me. Yes. That's what it was. Yes, hit me. Yeah, that's it was, what it was. Hit girls are totally different character. Yeah, hit girl, <laughs> completely different. All I'll be right back. Um, all right. So number three, Blood Rivals continues the story going here. Uh, we get to see a little bit more of her flashback and hinting that maybe she had a younger brother and they got separate ways. And they're being hunted down by this guy and pretty much the art speak for itself. A lot of fighting on the, on this. They're trying to basically get to, to the center point. They've been walking for days. Android makes some jokes. Uh, something tragic happens at the end. And after fight, I'm not going to show it. I want you guys to go Wait for Zach's review. <laughs> I guess I'm spoiling Void Rivals. Okay. Yeah. Um, then we get this cool Creature of the Black Lagoon kind of story in here. I can't wait to read that one. Because I love the original that movie. Looks, looks and I want to see how Ram B writes it. I mean, look at these ads in the back, too. I mean, wow. Wow. It's like we're reading them or something. And then all these, it says all the covers, exciting covers they have for this oh, issue. Cool. Uh, overall, I've been I've been enjoying this. As, as, as I think it's stepped up. The art is just insane. Reminds me of Danny Warren Johnson with these letters. I love it. I like how the arrow or the spear, whatever it was that he was throwing, it does like the Omega Beam uh, zigzags. Yeah, that was pretty cool. I thought, and that was a nice sound effect there. I feel that so that's I love this art. It's the man. I love more. I love motorcycles and and, and the comic books. You see a lot of cars. The motorcycles are awesome. So fun book. Uh, all right, now it, it comes out. My my own two books left, Zach, and uh, I love them both. I know what your number one is going to be. I think I know what your number one is going to be. All right, tell me what my number one is. I think your number one is Rook. You're right because number yeah, two is Red I, Coat. Yeah, I am. yeah, Red Coat has just been awesome. 
uh, the little sample store they had, you know, the, in the, the little um, ghost machine sample, didn't really do it justice. This is just fun. And I don't, I'm, <laughs> the fact he keeps wearing the coat, and it's been all these, it's been 100 years, he's still wearing the same outfit. It's like, you think you would kind of like change your outfit to blend in with the, with the mortals? But he's, yeah, it's a guy, he basically stumbles into, uh, how he stumbles into immortality by accident. Because he was hiding from people that are trying to kill him. That can't really kill him, but he doesn't like because he hates being dead for for twenty four hours and waking up in a coffin, and having a claw's way out. They introduced little Albert Einstein in here. That's yeah. kind of funny. I, I sort of described this to a friend of mine. It's kind of called. Uh, it's like he's like Highlander, but as a British agent instead. Mm, he's not really a British agent. He's just a guy who's basically that has jilted lovers. He's more of a jackal of trades, Bruce Campbell. Yes. But you know he started out as a like a British military. Yeah, guy. and a lot there's, there is a lot of. I mean, I love this. The only that's missing is the bottle I could drink. Nope. That was a well. That was a thing they did letters with. That wasn't yeah, a, yeah. an alcohol thing. Paul Revere, the Red Coats here. The Red Coats here. No shit, they are. <laughs> We've been here this whole time. <laughs> uh, yeah, I like the art. The art work on this too. Um, who, this is Brian Hitch doing that. Brian right? Hitch, baby. So you get a lot of cool, and it's a pretty thick book. And it, I think it's, it, was it more pages than the other two? It felt like it was it, more pages. It, it felt like it was 40 pages at least. Yeah. Maybe because you get the, on the background, you get the sample, like the dossiers. Yeah, I like those dossiers. That's why, that's why it's a little thicker. Well, but they all have those though. No complaints here though, bro. No complaints here. Uh yeah, but um, yeah, I just been having fun with this. This, the art is one of the best friends' story. Benjamin Franklin, part of a secret cult, trying to make himself immortal, and because he's in a mausoleum where you're sleeping, he he ended up uh falling into the thing. Uh, where is this show right here? Uh, that's before. Kind of like Ghostbusters in a sense. He ends up falling in there, and Ben Franklin's like, "What the hell's going on?" And like I said, I, I, I the, the art on this is just awesome. The after image effects, and then of course, it explodes. I like the, like the Katami unit. This is Ghostbusters. Um, but pretty much, yeah, here's Benjamin Franklin. He's like, get on with it. I want to be, because he wanted to be immortal. I'm like, I had no idea it was supposed to be Benjamin Franklin until they said something. I was like. That is kind of a Ben Franklin thing, though. Like, I was reading, I was like, I think Ben Franklin would try to do something like, like this. With electricity and all that stuff, you know, whatever. But uh, He probably would try to use that more than a, a religious. Uh, I, like I said, but... this, is a, this is a guy who basically, he. Join the red coats because they pay well. That's the only reason he didn't give a shit about King George whatsoever. And then by the time you go over there, I get all the six right after right, right around right around run the Revolutionary War, or just run it. Uh, and honestly, I, I thought it was actually a really interesting episode with him just kind of stumbling into things and the uh, it's his immortality. And then over the years, he's like, I don't really have that much. Uh, Luck with the fair era with, with the fair sex and shows three girls he jilted plus the previous one and then she sells them out to the guys who are trying to kill him because over the years he killed one guy's brother another guy's cousin another guy's, another guy's father and he's he said that because when he died he doesn't know why but he assumes because he's always famine he's always hungry and of course he has no coin <laughs> so he's always trying to hook up with these women to get to get free food no but drink but fun book. Number one, being Rook Exodus. This is just awesome. Space adventure. Um, kind of reminds me of Interstellar in a sense. Guy is a farmer. Ends up joining this because uh, Earth is being overpopulated and they're running out of resources. So he ends up uh, going to this planet. It promises, hey, they've been the new Earth. We're going to terraform it to be like Earth. And then it shows like all these years later, then the engine dies. So everything started change back being a barren way <coughs> everyone's left uh the people are left in, in there with or him are they basically may have control over like the animals but the animals are getting hungry and that's they're losing control of the animals he's got a friend called swine who's controlled the warthogs 
but they're just excited. Like for whatever reason, like maybe people uh, uh, speculate the reason why the animals got bigger is because maybe it was, it was the water was artificial, wasn't real and stuff. It was kind of like so maybe that chemicals in the water, but he ends up getting attacked by this, you know. Um, the giant bears. Like I said, with this issue, it's it, 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 it's a awesome space adventure. Him basically just reminiscing about when he was younger and how his father basically held out because he didn't want to be a uh, join them when when they were leaving. He said like it's a bunch of nonsense hogwash. Fifteen years later, house fire. He ends up being forced to go. You know, and uh, now he's just trying to build his ship to get out of here. And <laughs> what's he? He spent like a good couple of days where the show him he was uh, just getting drunk. And um, watching movies. Yeah, he went. He's he's the only one in this city, so he's been going through the rooms, crossing them off the supplies you know, day after day. Grabs what he can out of there, and then he goes and watches his movie in the theater. And it says, you know, and, and the the dialogue says, "Why'd you come back home? Because I never should have left, ever." So. Said awesome art here, good storyline. Brain, you feel like you've got something to say? Do you get a chance to get any of these books at all, Brain? Yeah. Okay. That all. But hello, what's going on, Elise? That is my uh, new books of the week, and I'll just quickly show off the back issues I got. And uh, Zach, did Shazam get come out this week too? Did you get that? I did. Shazam number ten. Okay, cool. We'll Lots to about, follow. We'll be talking about Shazam in a second. Okay. Shazam. Sorry, we'll yeah. No, that's part I mean, of oh, oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Never mind. Yeah, this was. Someone had this, so so I was like, cool. That's one of the best female costumes ever. Is the no, no buts about it. No buts oh, about what? it. You, you doggone right. Just the way it pops, the color and everything. All right. That's it for that one. Then I got this. That, that reprints Punisher cool Journal, concept. right? The Jim Lee art. They had six and seven, or five and six, six and Carl seven. Carl Potts and Jim Lee. Yeah. That's a very cool cover. And then this was kind of cool, so I had to grab it. Oh, those are those are awesome. There's only, there's only six of them, just old reprints. Now, that was uh, one of the first, first or second week I bought new comics. One of those books had come out, and I bought one. I had no idea they were reprints because I said I I didn't now, know. I think it was the one with um. They said this has uh, Superboy fights the thought beast of Krypton, which like Krypton. Um, Wonder Woman battles the gunslingers of space. Kid Flash meets the elongated man. Hey, because there's that in in uh, Super Team Family were all reprints at the time, in in the early issues. In that, yeah, you know, should... that book didn't last, but Super Team Family did. And... Number two, yeah, those those are, that's all. That's awesome. So what's really awesome is my last back issue of the week. Or... Shazam! Shazam! Now that's that's Shazam, Zach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So looks like Herbie on that uh one mirror. <coughs> this is 1973 by CC Beck, number four of Shazam. So cool. All righty, who wants to go next, kids? I guess I can. I said kids. <laughs> okay, so that leaves up uh, leaves up me and Breen. Uh, so I didn't hear me volunteer. <laughs> and of course, that's what Navy stands for: never again volunteer yourself. But uh, okay, I've, I've got five and a back issue. So number five, Moon Knight. Spoiler: It's the Shroud. Yes, I, and I have no idea. Wow, Breen just went out there and just like dropped it, just like. Boom. Well, well, we talked about it before dropped you got it here. Like it's hot. Yep. Speaking of which, we're uh, body count is coming up here in about a month. So, 
thinking of going. Hmm. But uh, oh, wait, wait, body count for the wood chipper? No, body count oh, is in oh. the band. Ice T's band. The wood chipper. Is he still with him? Lipton. Yes. yes. And then Ice Cube's coming up too, from what I saw. But okay, and then number four. Wow. Um, you got that? Hum- that that's uh twentieth, fifth, or twentieth anniversary? Yes, twentieth. Oh yeah, the hack slash. We saw that. Uh, it was actually night. Tim Slade doing the art on there too. Yep, twenty bloody years. It says. So this is the only one that I haven't finished reading. I got. And, uh, this is a uh, Breen's Kryptonite right here. These little strips. It's, it's All the little things, yeah, the little peelies on the uh, on the back. I love those. Those are. It's kind of hard to get them, and the only problem is. Uh, it's very hard to get rid of them. Jump. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Mean, it, it's it takes Breen the five seconds because he when he falls slips on one. Holy shit! Exactly. Uh, Rangers Devils game. The, the puck drop, massive brawl. They kicked like eight players out of the game. Really. <laughs> Dang, this is awesome. They're, 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 that's, that's gonna be a short game. Is great I'm gonna like have that. to watch that on Sports Center after I get wow. Okay. Now, that's my kind of hockey. Hey, <laughs> yep, exactly. And number three, this is one that I actually had to go back for because uh, I wasn't gonna get it, but then I saw that it was connected to my number one and two. Geiger, number three. Or number one, sorry. This is number three. Go around at number one. (laughs) Uh, Sort of liked it, but I think I remember reading the first Geiger, but then I didn't, you know, I don't remember much of it. But uh, number two, which I grabbed, Red Coat. And this this one's thicker than... uh, Seems thicker than uh, Geiger. I, all right, so that's the third of us that said that, so it must be true. Because well, I thought cause, that cause, was Geiger good. radiation, so he's not that strong downstairs. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, this is a this is a great book. I knew nothing of these, you know. And I went in. I only had two books when I you know, that I uh, that I was going to get. Then I just saw the this one and the next one I have on here and grabbed them and. I'm glad I did because I loved them. And then I had to go back and get the Geiger and then some else. And so my number one, Exodus. I mean, yeah, Rook. Oh, Ex- you and Venkman are besties now. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it up. You're out of the wheel. You might throw some apples there, uh, Brain. And some caramel, too. And num- uh, my back issue, and this is just something that I got because I saw it sitting there and it looked interesting. I think this, this didn't come out this week. I think it was before. Under York. Hmm. It's not bad. It's a, uh, it's about some like magician, group of magicians under the city. And I guess this girl is sort of not... She used to be with him, and now she's up being an artist, and then she gets kidnapped and brought back down to stop some bad people from taking over the world. Or, you know, not like that's never been done before. But eh, what fun is the world if people aren't trying to take it over? Exactly. Right? And, yep, but, exactly. I'd say I love the comic industry. I'm I'm hatching my my own plans to try and take it over, but it's gonna take a little bit. <laughs> what of time. are we gonna do tonight, Brain? Same thing we do every <laughs> night. Every night. night. Try to take <laughs> over the world. <laughs> are you thinking what I'm thinking? Zoics. Zoics, Gee, Brain. But where are we gonna get all those popsicles from? <laughs> all right. Anything else? Nope. Uh, who is next now? Step on down. It's your turn. Might as well give it to Zach. Yeah. I've got, I, I do actually have some cool stuff in addition to the regular weekly stuff. I do have some some neat stuff. I got Ryan North. Now, everyone was saying <laughs> that's, that's, next week. 
That's next week. That's I'm, next week is the issue that that pulp noir cover. Is, is that next week? week? I think it is next week. Oh, shit. Next, next next week we'll all have Ryan North. <laughs> next week we're all gonna be Ryan North fans. That's right. Y'all are all gonna feel what it's like to be me for one shit, day. I should have. I should have made sure I had. I should have made sure and ordered one. Do they sell out pretty fast at your shop? Well, I don't know how many of those we'll get. What is it? And what what book is this? It, it's Fantastic it's a Fantastic Four, Four cover. It's an Alex Ross painting Sue Storm. It's just gorgeous. And she's a dame. And she's not. I mean, she's not showing any skin, but it's just it's she's beautifully classy. done. Yeah. I sort of oh, like that. Uh, actually, there's, an, there's a White Frost, uh, a White Queen, or a, a Frost X Men cover oh. that came out this week that looked really good. All of. Alex Ross's covers for the Ryan North series have been pretty good. His covers are definitely the high point. There's the one of Dr. Doom riding the Doom T-Rex. I want a poster of that. Um, Speaking of Fantastic Four, I want to talk about that after we get done with this stuff. I just want a statue. I'm I'm, I'm tapped out on Fantastic Four. Y'all can talk. I'll listen. No, it's about casting this for the new movie. Yep, I know that's what you're talking about. I'm not getting involved. so far now, it's just a rumor because all right, no has confirmed anything. Starting at the bottom of my list, number six, because I'm, yes. I'm I'm not quite digging it, but we got Shazam number ten. This is Moving Day Part One I did, I did from Josie Campbell and Emmanuel Lupacino. I don't remember. Lupacino's art being like this with the world's finest Teen Titans, it, it seemed a little bit more mm, adult. No, that's not it. Tumblr, worse, worse, worse. Her Teen Titans art was better. I remember her Teen Titans art being better. Me, it's the same. Uh, I I this, I, I didn't care for the art and this as much. It wasn't terrible, but it just wasn't as good as what I remembered her doing. But um, as good as he once was. Yeah. Uh, the story isn't awful per se. Uh, there's definitely, you can tell there's a, there's definitely a change in quality of the writing between this and the previous issue. She doesn't yeah. write nearly as, it's not nearly as easy to follow as Mark Wade Shazam has been. There's a lot of word vomit just all over the place. Like, so basically this house that they have, Zeus rebuilt their home after Black Adam and Shazam destroyed Shazam's family's home. Zeus decided, okay, I'll be a good guy. I'll rebuild this house. But what he did was he anchored Olympus to the Batson house so that there's like a, a doorway, like a bathroom or a closet door. They like open a, like a rocket turning, basically. Yeah. And so because, but because Zeus did that, all the other gods connected to Shazam have that happen as well. And it's just really confusing the way they, they word it or try to explain it. The overall story itself isn't bad. Um, I'm not going to say it's an Insta drop undead Quinn. I'm going to give, I'm going to give it one more issue to see if she can find a good pacing for it. Uh, if she can't though, then, well, yeah, probably. I probably will drop it at some there, point. There is one thing that might be an Instagram drop for people. It was uh, Billy uh, Batson, basically Captain uh, Captain Marvel and uh, Mary Marvel team up. That's not that's not a bad thing. I don't well, no, thing I people don't like Mary Marvel. They prefer to having Shazam. It's called Shazam. It's called, and it, it should just be Billy. Except can't have a story there's the whole family. The hero. Their whole this yeah. is the whole Shazam family is in here. I know. Uh, I but think only, only 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 one only two of them have powers, and that's, that's uh, that yeah. is true. Currently, that is true. But you do have Talky Tawny in here, um, which is which is fun for me. I do like Talky Tawny. The, the dinosaur the does not make an appearance. False advertising. I call shenanigans. Mm -hmm. um, this is not ending though. I remember a lot of people were like, "Oh, Shazam ends at issue number 10. Uh No, apparently they've got more story to tell. Um, it does end on a cool note. They talk about like the, the foster parents want to adopt all the, the foster kids, all the Shazam family. That's kind of sweet there. The sweet stuff with like the foster kids stuff is nice and, you know, feel good moments and everything. Um, but yeah, not terrible, but definitely a dip in quality from the Mark Way Dan Moore run or, um, or start of it. Speaking of foster parents in Shazam, 
Guess who one of the people who are coming up to the Comic Con here and about is it Jerry from The Walking Dead? The dad, yes, I love that guy. He was my favorite new character. He's the the father in Shazam, and he's also the he was Jerry in The Walking Dead. Yeah, he was my favorite guy. He was like the positive guy. Uh, if I ever find out they killed him, I'd be really mad at Robert Kirkman and The Walking Dead. They didn't kill him. The TV show, yeah, Ezekiel's uh, buddy. No, he seemed like a he seemed like a definite red shirt. In that show, but uh, right. the, the guy who plays Aaron in The Walking Dead is actually on the X Men show. Cartoon show. Oh yeah, because he does a lot of voice stuff. He voiced uh, Red Skull in uh, Endgame. Yeah. Anyway, uh, next we have Void Rivals issue number eight. Uh, better, a lot more action than the previous issue. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm pretty convinced that Robert Kirkman is writing the the male lead in this, just like as his own version of uh, of Nathan Fillion from Firefly or or Star Lord. He's kind of just that sarcastic wannabe hero guy, I guess, or wants to be cool hero guy. Um, also, I'm pretty sure that the the bounty hunter guy is what's her name, Salila, Salila's uh, brother. Is what they they kind of allude to, I guess. But yeah, the art in this, the action in this, everything in this is great. This was fantastic. This was a this was a fun issue. I, I really enjoyed this one. First one since well, this is only its second issue since it came back from break. But it was it was I I thought it was far better than the last issue. Uh, next up is Vengeance of the Moon Knight number four. Uh, yes, it is the Shroud. I actually had to do some 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 catching up on the Shroud because I. Didn't remember who that was at first. Um, I found it interesting. Not where I thought it was going to go. I thought it was just going to be another Mark Spector. Like, even leading up to the reveal when Tiger was like, you shove pepper up my nose so I wouldn't smell you. I thought I was like, oh, because she would recognize Mark Spector. But then it ended up being, I was, I was surprised. So kudos to Jed McKay. He went somewhere as a, something I didn't see coming. So kudos to that. Um, I do also like the Hunter's Moon character more. The, sh- the more they show him and he talks about like his motivations and stuff, I do like him more and more. Um, so yeah, this was this was a good issue. I really like this. That This is Jed McKay's best book right now. Of the three he's got going on, I think Moon Knight is his best one. And then there were three. And um, I'm going to see if I can't do this all at the same time because... Uh, I did it too, RDV. Actually, I didn't even have to look for them. I forgot that I had requested all three of these uh, pulled, so I didn't even have to search <laughs> for them. So I, I got all the connecting covers. Nice. Um, Rook Exodus. That sounded like it was a hearty meal. Uh, as a soda. That was a fart <laughs> out of his mouth. Uh, <laughs> Rook Smells Exodus like is my, uh, my number three. Uh, yeah, it was a really good sci-fi story. I like the the world building element of it. Um, very curious to see. I we saw like the the swine guy when they did like the introductory story during the like the ghost machine number one. I'm very, much more curious about like the new ones. Like they showed that that guy at the end. Uh, that seemed really really interesting to me. Um, but yeah, it, it does have kind of an Inception feel to it, I guess. I, could, I, got, I didn't even put that together, uh, Bankman, before you said that. But it, kind of, it does kind of have that feel to it. Um, I'm also wondering if this, this is called Rook Exodus. Like, I mean, that's one planet. Because you're, cause you're, cause it's called Exodus because they're leaving. The, the Exodus planet. was the name of the planet. Yeah. And, and so it's like, okay, well, if this is Exodus, Exodus they're they going to have planet. other planets with other warden characters. Well, like, it's it's about Rook. He's on Exodus. So eventually, yeah. eventually... I mean, when Rook leaves Exodus, it'll be also called, called Rook. Yeah, right. Rook wherever. Rook other planet. Rook Mars. Yeah, Rook Mars. Sure. So that one was really good, though. I really enjoyed Rook, that one. Rook um, in space. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was, it was really cool because, like, I like how they mentioned. So, like, oh, okay, these people, they train these people to control birds, basically trying to control the environment. And it's like all the different things that you could use the animals for. Like yep. they, they have his friend. He he uses pigs to to find certain things because like pigs, you know, you can use them. They they root out certain truffles or mushrooms and stuff. So I thought that was that was actually pretty creative. 
Um, next one I liked was Geiger, number one. Uh, third go round for this guy. I, I still I like this one a lot. Um, this one was really cool. What happens is Geiger ends up in this town, runs off these thugs that are stealing food and trying to like steal children and everything. And there's this guy who's been following him. He's like dressed up like a knight. And he's from like one of the gang leaders of Las Vegas that wants to capture Geiger. And he like he he seems to have like this change of heart. He's like, I want to be a hero, I want to be like you. And Geiger's like, I'm not a hero. Leave me alone. And then, so then, the night guy, he's like, well, shoot. If everything's pointless, I'm just going to, like, commit seppuku on myself. And then Geiger turns around and's like, what are you doing? So he's, like, reluctantly taking him along as his sidekick, I guess. Um, I, I, I enjoyed that. Um, it, was, it was a good story. Uh, and then the final one, my personal favorite, is Redcoat number one. Um uh, I like historical fiction a lot. And then just having this guy is like, just like a, a devil may care, just scoundrel guy uh, going through history. Uh, just like <laughs> they show like, why are these people always trying to kill me? It's one guy. He's like, you killed my brother. You killed my father. You killed me. Like he just kills a lot of guys. And then they show him getting slapped by all the women. And it just like reminds me of Jack Sparrow. He's like, I might have deserved that. Uh, Really, really good. I, I really enjoyed this. Uh, you know, they show him meeting a young uh, Einstein towards the end. Uh, it also has some of that really fun, like I know on the last page they showed it, it was some of that really fun trade dress that you used to see in uh, in older comics like a Marvel or, or DC where it was like, uh, where was it? Where it's like, I don't know, the trade just, just seemed really fun uh, to me. It's like the genius and the idiot. Guess who's who? Uh, you know, it just it just seemed really fun. Brian Hitch's art in this, I think this is some of the best art he's done. Uh, some older art I know he's done, it seems a little too close to being like traced photographs, not quite Greg Land esque, but this was, I think, some of the best art he's done in a while. So, really, really love this one. Um, did not get any back issues, I did get. A trade, though, a trade that I've been hearing about for a while. One of the workers at my LCS told me about it. She's a big World War I, World War II genre fan. So she recommended Aerosmith, uh, which is basically <laughs> World War I with magic and that's, dragons. That's not Steve Tyler. No, this is not Steve Tyler. Uh, <laughs> this is Kurt Busaic and Carlos Pacheco. And, uh, yeah, it's basically World War I with magic and dragons instead of bombs and bullets. Uh, this is the first six issues. I haven't read it yet, but it, it looks really cool. I like uh, Carlos Pacheco's artwork. So I think there's another six issues that came out after this. Um, so I'll have, I'll probably track that down after I read this, if I enjoy this one or not, uh, which I think I will. And then two last really cool things. I think I shared this in the Twitter group, in the Twitter DM, but okay. I didn't get a chance to show them off here. I found these really, really cool old DC Direct uh, figurines. Oh, yeah, nice. Of the JSA. Mom. <laughs> I like my, my kettle. Yeah, the, the, mom, the mom Uncle Red Tornado one at the end is awesome. But yeah, you see you've got Sandman, Starman, uh, Johnny Thunder, they have Wildcat. And so this is, this is one. So there are three sets like this. I have two of them. Um, the third one is actually pretty hard to track down. That's the one that has Jay Garrick and Alan Scott in it. Are you going to put a shelf up behind you so you can put them up? I was wondering what to do with these because I do want to put them on a shelf or something. I've just got to find something with I, room I was, to I, I was just all. saying I would put them on the left side of your uh, Justice League or, not, or JSA uh, books. On the left side? Would be your right, your, your right side. This side? Where the empty space is. What empty space? What the door swings into. Yeah, there's no empty space. I got stuff uh, on, uh, on, on the wall. Next oh, 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 up there. Oh, okay. I you could, but if I open the door, you know, you know Breen, I did find the empty space. It's between his ears. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> and there's enough there for all three of those. You can turn that some bump <laughs> sideways and stick it up your candy. No, I said, it, no. There's more space between his ears. True. <laughs> Terrific. <laughs> I like the Wonder Woman in there too. My one no, thing is they have Hawk Man, but no Hawk Girl. 
I don't Every time you show me this, the, the length of box, I think of the, um, what is the Snickers by the yard or Twix by the yard? You get Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> they're very long. Yeah. The other one, like I said, the, they're, they're seven figures to a, to a pack. And like I said, the third one has Jay and Alan, and then it has five members of the Injustice League. Yeah. Like it has uh, Grundy and Icicle. And I think it's it got she got Aerosmith as well. Nice. Right on. Right Smith. on, Alan Lee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I need to re- I'm I'm looking forward to reading this. Like I said, I love Carlos Pacheco's mm-hmm. art style too. So like I love like when he did Fantastic Four, that's some of my favorite Fantastic Four art was from was from him. Mm-hmm. But mm. That is that is it for me this week. <coughs> All right, Mr. Brain. Time to get brained. Um, it's well, been a minute with Eric Breen. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. That works. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> All right, no particular order. That's yeah, Superman in 78. Nice ending. Nice, yeah, nice uplifting ending. Right, so we talked about that. Tried too hard. But nice. I want to see at least go to other issues, see where this goes. Mm-hmm. Um, then, of course, there's the the three you know, Ghost Machine books. Since I'm not, I don't give a shit about connecting covers, but I do like the go go checks. I got the two. I, I, I was about to say, if Bree uh, doesn't have the go go uh, checks, I think there's an issue too, right? You got this week of something. Uh, yes. And it's, it didn't <laughs> get any nicer. Oh, <laughs> that's good or bad? No, well, said, it, considering what he did to the girl in the first book, I can only imagine how it gets worse. And he's talking to the family who had accused him of killing their dad. And he keeps insisting that he didn't. Then something starts breaking down and they try to do something to him. So he just he blows away one of the three and he goes, I killed your fucking dad. So it's like <laughs> still don't know for sure if he did, but I mean it's just yeah, it's um it, it's it's what you'd expect from a book drawn by Eduardo Rizzo and probably with a writer that, you know, has a lot in common with Brian Azzarello. I, I just don't know where this story is going. Uh, to hell, probably. <laughs> it's got to end with it. It's got to end with his death. That's all I got to say. Well, but I think Torpedo is actually an old pulp character. So I, oh. who knows? Because he's kind of like. I, I his... didn't know that until I, yeah. until I heard somebody talking about. Um, then the other one picked up this Archie and Friends. Yeah, you know, Puppetine <laughs> must have named this. Um, <laughs> and it it was not as syrupy as a lot of the modern Mar- Archie stuff. Okay. It was actually entertaining. Yeah, because usually it has to be the horror stuff to yeah be worth reading but this was the yeah, other there was a trace of mean spiritedness none of the none of the checkbox characters that have been introduced over the last several years mm-hmm. are in this not that you can't use them but i mean usually when they do it's on the you know saccharine side and i kind of like this uh yeah so i mean it's fun that's cool yeah. Yeah, I was, I was wondering how modern it was because because sometimes I think they they all think it's a modern book, but they actually has clutch of older stuff in there. No, no, it's, it's they're all new stories, and but they if you've read any modern stories set in the regular Archie verse, not the Riverdale, not the yeah. Afterlife with Archie, not the you know not Vampironica, the there are ju- they're just so oh look, there's Kimmy. Let's let's she's in a wheelchair. She's the but yeah. The, you know, let's let's pick up her wheelchair so she can dunk a basket. Yeah, it's like it's just too, yeah, just too cutesy. Yeah, it, this one, yeah, kind of. Like I said, yeah, you know, it's it, it was it was entertaining enough. So that's oh, all right. I look forward to next week to see how long your beard gets. <laughs> <laughs> well, Morania was saying that Zach was the you know is the bearded guys with Zach. Zach is a Frank Beard, everyone else is easy top. I don't know if Frank Beard has double or not. I, I, I don't know about that. I'll, I'll just say this, so that Zach's got more uh, fur on his upper lip than uh, Pixel does. That's true. Frank Beard is the only one in ZZ Top who doesn't have a beard, and his name is Beard. That's ah. right. 
Yeah, how's that for our irony? Maybe leave with that first, because not all of us know about ZZ Top. Other than the fact that there was two guys that uh, sang in Blake's art. So, anyway. Um, one, of them, one of the beards, one of the bearded guys died, right? Uh, yeah. Yes. Years yes. ago, I think it was. I think it was Dusty. Oh, it makes sense. All the Dusties are, are dying. Hey, Zach. Hey, how's it going? I was trying to see what you have that pop. Funko Pop behind you. Is that One Piece stuff? Uh, Funko Pops. I, uh, one of them is. Uh, so the one I have outside of the box is uh, Luffy. Gear yes. 2 Luffy. But then I've got this is another anime. This is uh, this is Alex Armstrong from Full Metal Alchemist. He's always ripping his shirt off and showing his muscles and they glitter. See, There's see actually the, glitter on the pop. That's what Breen has to get his mustache like that. That is yes. He is the best character in the whole show, by the way. Um, you know, I did. Also... I did hear the other day that, that you know Rod grew, grew his mustache into a handlebar at one time. My pastor. Oh, I, 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 I thought you said recently. I was like, Rod? No, not recently, but yeah. But, that's, uh, that's but yeah, that's so it. you know what it is. You know what it is. Now that, now that there's no more that breeds on the fossils and all this stuff anymore, he's like, I'm just letting it all grow out. No. No, I no, no, I I was on the yeah I did do the memories Saturday. He yes, was on but, the show too. But, but I mean, that. but I mean, as far as like the Everyday Wednesday fossils, no, you don't you don't have to present as much. You just you know you can just let it. Go. I don't I don't have to present well anymore. <laughs> is that you can relax? A, is that a Jim Lee Catwoman behind you there? Uh, RDV? Probably him. Yeah, it's probably him, not me. I knew he yeah. wasn't talking to me. No, the one above your head. Pinkman, the, there's right above your head. In oh, the, the one you were showing me, the printout. Uh, oh, those? There's, yeah, there's oh. the. Is, is that those a Jim Lee that? Catwoman right there? The picture. See, that, that's, I don't know if it's Jim Lee, but I know it's. Um, hold on a second. I thought it was Art Germ. It, it seemed like Art Germ. I, I think they're the Art Germs because that's normally it's. it's a, it, it came out purple because my because I used the wrong printer paper. But it's supposed to be black with the gold lenses. Okay. And then the other one where she has the black lace on her face and stuff. Those are from the Joel Jones covers. Mm. They're serious. That's what they are. So, oh, yeah. And speaking of Dusty, yeah, actually, I have three more JSA covers from Alex Ross. I just need to get three more frames to put on the on the left side. So that's that empty space is going to get a little bit smaller. Actually, you should put Wildcat and uh, and. Um... Mr. Terrific, or, or, or whoever's on there, you should put them all in the in the middle there. That glare is so you can't see them. Well, Mr. Terrific is is top center, and then Wildcat is over here. Why would Wildcat? Why would you want to hide Wildcat? So everything looks white to you. Wildcat is white. That's why you like him. You don't get the joke. No. I like Wildcat because he's just a boxer. Because he's got the black costume. Yeah. Okay. Actually, the middle is uh, the one dead in the middle that looks like he catches the most glare is uh, Star Girl and Stripes, and then right next to her is Jakeem Thunder. So. Jakeem Thunder. Jakeem Thunder. Yeah, he's the guy who gets the Thunderbolt after Johnny Thunder. And lightning thunderbolts. Okay. All right. Um. Not that much is going on on um, the comic book news. It was brought up. I'll. Briefly go into this, the Fantastic Four thing. There's Marvel has not come forward and uh, confirmed anything. Deadline ran with the article saying that there was to be a female Silver Surfer based off of uh, Silver Surfer's wife. They're going to basically make her Silver Surfer instead of uh, Norwin, I think it's name. Norwin. 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 Yeah. I heard that was so, confirmed, though. But it was not confirmed by Marvel, though. Marvel has not said anything. It's only a, uh, all these other news sites are basically piggybacking off of De Deadline, has basically said. Uh, even Hollywood Reporter was saying, "Oh, our source is Deadline," and uh, so I don't know. I don't really care. I'm not going to watch because I don't like Patrick Pascal as being casted as Reed Richards, no. and I'm kind of done with it anyway. And, and as far as if it, if it is really dare having that it's going to be a female Silver Surfer and they're making her square girl, who knows? Maybe it's a multiverse. I don't know where that because it does. What were the, There's what a lot of people are saying it's it's 
that it, it takes place in an alternate universe. Because which I'm going to reiterate my statement from earlier this week: the multiverse is just lazy now. It's just a different way to show different demographics of the fa of the same character. Yes, and that's, they say that's how they're going to bring the Fantastic Four in, and I also think that's how they're going to bring the X Men in. So apparently, the Fantastic the Four were to be in the '60s, trapped in the '60s. Yeah. That's what. Storyline. Which that part I don't mind. That part sounds cool to me. So in the sixties, are you the this current universe? I mean, or is it a different universe? Either way, yeah. I, I, like I said, I'm the point where I don't care, and I'm laughing because of the the Brave New World with the fake Captain America Falcon. I'm gonna call him Falcon because I'm not calling him Captain America. Yeah. The screen did test, they, they, and, and they did a screen test, and apparently everybody hated it. Uh, what a shock! <laughs> yeah. Yet the shareholders had a chance to vote in people that wanted to take it a different direction, and they yeah. didn't do it. So I want to hear. Apparently, they did like one of those uh, shareholder call-ins or whatever. Those those uh, where like they give like the earnings reports and people like chime back there. Apparently, some people really gave Iger and company an earful. Oh I yeah, well, Nelson Peltz. You know, he, he, he made a play for it. He had Perlmutter's backing. He's a you know, he's a friend of Trump, but I guess yeah you know, it's it's weird. A bunch of shareholders basically voted to lose money. That's wild. Yeah, because that's how important it is to be woke now. I guess that yep. even investors would rather lose money than than I I, I don't know. I, I said it's it makes no sense because I promise you that the ESG money isn't going to go to all, all the shareholders. That's going to go oh. to Iger and you know, his pals the yeah. top. Yeah. But yeah, I said, I, I don't get it. <laughs> and hello to Glenzer. Thank you for watching. So, Glenzer! It'll okay. probably, I said, it, you're, anything, it, it, it'll, it'll probably be all woke, full speed ahead for the next year until the next vote. Because I, I, I did, I read some stuff on there. I said that they vote again in another year, and this was basically a yeah, you know, like a hail mary for Iger's bunch. So basically, if they vote in another year, they'll be after their twenty or twenty twenty four election, and who knows? Maybe yeah. that will, will change depending on who's president, well, or it might stay the same. Well, yeah. You know. So it's yeah. Well, <coughs> but I don't get it. Like, I, you know, I how you could how you could vote to keep a CEO well, well, who has just been failing failure after failure now. Well, we know that voting uh, can be rigged, so yeah, I I, I wonder that. if the Disney thing which it was rigged as well. Uh, you know what? I that's not as far fetched as it sounds. Yeah, you know, because if you want to keep a business the same way, you're gonna if you're gonna be like, Pick well, they voted the for this, and who's who's running who's running the voting over there? Dominion. <laughs> <laughs> Is it? Is it? You click on this. Uh, go to this website. You click. You click a voting on the poll thing, and then they're like, "Let's go in there. And we're gonna change the numbers." So, uh, or word it, we're we're gonna word it away like they always like to do. When you go to job interview, would you do this? Do this? And they ask you the same question thirteen times in different words, and they try to trip you up. So, I was uh, scrolling down X, and apparently Rob Liefeld's gonna have memoir. some kind of memoir thing. I, it was it was a lefty. Tw you know, comic Twitter site that you know, showed that. Yeah. And I I, re I ran the thread, and of course, it was filled with the usual shit. And it, it's amazing how I said the fact that he's not far left, they hate him. But yeah. they said that only one of the original Image Seven was worthy of having like a buy, like a bio, whatever it is that he's doing. Yeah. You want to take a guess well, which one they in their eyes? Eric Larson. Yep. Not Todd McFarlane. Eric Larson. Yeah. One of those is wildly more successful than the other. One of those. One of them does kitty porn, so that's that makes you a hero of the left now. And who's that yeah. one? Eric Larson. Larson. Yeah. You must not be reading Savage Dragon, and you you should be thinking. I don't that. read Savage Dragon. <laughs> I used to read it, but <clears throat> See, I don't know enough about this. I, I I was gonna ask you guys about this. I don't know enough about this guy, but it, it just. From what I know, he, I saw a couple of the messages, and it seemed a little sketchy because he kept calling, "Are you a bad girl? Are you a bad girl?" Oh, that's that's, that's, that's someone else. Oh, that's, 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 that's a different. Oh. Yeah, that's, 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 we're, oh, we're, okay. we're not Sorry. gonna we're not gonna go into that. Sorry, I, I was. No, I said, that, I said that's up, but you know, now I'm not trying to take anything away from Eric Larson. I mean, he's you know he's done the work. I don't mm -hmm. agree with some of the stuff he's done, but 
He also, to his credit, did a two-hour interview with John Delarose, who is as opposite is of Eric Larson as you can be. Yeah. But they they stuck to comics and got along fine. Yeah. yeah regardless of your opinion on John Delarose, he he does love comics and does have a breadth of knowledge, and as does Eric Larson. And yeah. two people from completely different walks of life, and that's something that not all the left lefty like. Listen, Mark Wade would rather jump off a tall building than talk to a conservative at this point, or or burn down an entire. Yeah, I, I, you know, in that in that regard, I'd rather you know, give me Eric Larson all day long. Right. Um, yeah. Right. Um, yeah. The other thing that from uh, Lightfield that he's working apparently is a uh, Evangeline is is going to be from a movie with Olivia Wilde oh, is involved. Really? So it makes me cringe because Olivia Wilde is cuckoo crazy as this. She left her husband for a guy who likes to wear dresses. Harry Harry Styles, remember? Mm. After she just had a baby with uh Jason uh Sudeskis. Dude, that was oh. one of the most dude, I felt so bad for the guy. I was like, look at that funny guy. The funny guys get the girl and then she she left. I was like, Are you she, left, she left him for another woman. <laughs> so I, I don't. Right, feel, I think J- Jason went out. He got a good show. Ted Lasso. Everybody loves it. Ted Lasso. And then he laughed because, oh, you're dating a guy who wears the same clothes you're wearing right now. He great. He got shirt clothes still, now. I think it's funny that she got she got served on stage. I thought that was actually kind of funny. Yeah. So, uh, so I don't know how what's going to go with this Evangeline, but please ask you for Evangeline movie in 2024. It that's. It's a, it's a female-led character that really no one knows about at all. Um, means that, except for Rob Liefeld, because he wrote the character. But that was a dollar bin, not even a dollar. That was a quarter bin in the nineties. Oh, and I, I have price books. Uh, now you can get a couple bucks a piece for them. Yeah, that, that's actually that actually like that sells. But remember, Glory. Yeah. Doesn't. Yeah. I I, I don't know what the you know, I, I, I will be interested to see this to see if they show Evangeline's feet in the movie, though. <laughs> <laughs> if Quentin Tarantino's directing, they will. The, that's by the most, the most disgusting scene in that whole movie from Front Dust of Dawn is the whole pouring the alcohol out. Oh, right. the thing with the right back. Yeah. That's and don't he, don't come in here, don't, and don't you freaks come here like, well, it's Samuel Heck. She's so hot. I'd suck her toe. That's why he cast himself in that character. Of course he did. Look, hey man, if you can shoot your shot like that, more power to you. <laughs> I don't need that. With you. I don't need that. And he could write it off as a tax. He could write off the tequila as a tax uh, write off. Don't, don't don't ever use that phrase after we just talked about someone sucking his own toes. If you can shoot your <laughs> shot, <laughs> shot <of tequila. laughs> Mm. Oh, oh man! Don't blame me. I'm using a common colloquialism. You're the one with the dirty mind. Yeah, yeah, MFK. Yeah. So she is. Phrase. She is. Phrase. Selma Hayek is still a hottie. One of the she, and one hundred percent. She's cool. unbelievable. God. How old is she now? She's like sixty. She's in her 50s. She's do you know in her 50s. Do you know who's still good looking? Elizabeth She's Harley? fifty-seven. Michelle Pfeiffer. Oh, you're. You're you're throwing down, aren't you, there, uh, Vinkman? You know yeah. you're trying you're trying to go, Zach, aren't you? He's trying. I don't He's I don't trying. have to go with Zach at all. Zach Zach knows, and he and he, as much as he hates to disagree with me, you know, he just he does it because it's great for content. That's why he disagrees with me about the whole Michelle Pfeiffer. That's why he does the hot takes. Best looking Catwoman, by the way. Because Zach actually Not liked him. Zach Not liked him. Yeah, and Catwoman instead he goes for the it goes Catwoman for, is a brunette, not a blonde. Anne Hathaway is the best looking Catwoman. Oh, dude. oh, now you're no. Zoe Kravitz is a lot better than Zoe Kravitz was all right. Zoe Kravitz no, was all right. No, I'm not no. gonna. I'm not gonna. It goes Anne Hathaway. Well, first of all, hang on. Hold Julie on. Julie Andrews. Ju- <laughs> Julie, Julie Andrews. Andrews? Julie the, Newmar. Or sorry, sorry, Newmar. But Andrews <laughs> is hot though. Those two. <laughs> Julie is alive with the sound of music. <laughs> That was the other lead role from Princess Diaries that you were thinking of. Yes. Julie Newmar, but you know, then it goes Anne Hathaway, no. Zoe Kravitz, Julie Newmar, Barry, Michelle Pfeiffer, and then Michelle Pfeiffer. The kids. And then 
Oh yeah, Eartha Kitt. Where, where, where's, where's, uh, and Halle Berry was better. Halle Berry was better than Eartha Kitt, though. I think. Oh. I think she was better. I, I had more of a crush on Halle Berry than Eartha Kitt, so that kind of factors into it. <laughs> We're getting so Undead Quinn is giving uh some tomatoes here. We don't do tomatoes here, Undead Quinn. It's apples. Wait a minute. Um, what what was the? <laughs> we went to Michelle Pfeiffer versus Anne Hathaway. Vinkman confused Julie Newmar for Julie Andrews. No, you said that. What I was thinking, oh, he no, said that. No, I no, I, 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 I wasn't. I wasn't thinking of the song girl. I was thinking of the Black Lagoon actress. That's what I was trying to think of. What her, her last name was because I thought they were the same. What wasn't uh, Julie Newmar the one that went? The hills are alive. Yeah, that <laughs> That's the second person who sung that today. <laughs> Michelle um, Pfeiffer, hundred percent best cat, cat woman on uh no on Dead Quinn. I'm sorry. Okay, <laughs> you can think differently though. This who's, is 2024. Anne Hathaway's kind of managed though. What you're saying? Anne Hathaway is the best cat woman. The yeah, best looking saying. one under Julie Newmar. Oh, uh, you're on paste. You are some sniffing some glue. And then I said Halle Berry was better looking than Eartha Kitt. Well, yeah, yeah Halle Berry is the hottest Catwoman. Yeah, I mean, I'm sorry if she if Halle Berry played her played a character, that's the hottest version of that character. That's just that's been proven scientifically. Um, and I and I although I think Anne Hathaway is really hot in her own way. I, she looks I, good I, in the suit. I just don't yeah, find all that attractive. I, I gotta I gotta give. I gotta give Michelle Pfeiffer the nod for yeah you know, in the suit, but I'll tell you, you know, if the show had lasted a few more years, she'd have probably been the prettiest cat oh, the, 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 woman. The blonde that was there, Julian. Yeah, the girl, the girl from Gotham. She looks just like uh, Michelle Pfeiffer. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah, oh yeah. She's yeah. she's she's hot by default because she looks like Michelle Pfeiffer. But I don't. I mean, I I haven't seen. Has she done anything since Gotham? I don't That's think so. A question actually. I Drew haven't seen anybody oh from Gotham since the show. Is what I'm going home. <laughs> Julie Strain as Catwoman. Man, yeah. that's Jim. That's, that's Jim Belente's. Uh, no, that's, I, I can't. I can't go along with. There are plenty of characters that you know. Vampirella, absolutely. Yes. Catwoman, she's probably too large in stature. Not now. Don't get me wrong. I like to hear. <laughs> I've never heard her say she's too large in stature <laughs> to play Catwoman. Because Catwoman, I said, you know, the whole, like the one word, life, and you know, Julie Strain was that—that's a lot of woman in all the right places, you know. But I don't know if it, you know, hey, it would she she'd be great for Catwoman cosplay, but I don't think she could play Catwoman. Go ahead. What about his Red Sonia? I can see that. Yeah, see, <laughs> hottest poison I've Uma Thurman or Peyton List, the, the, the Gotham. Peyton List. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Not not the one, not the Peyton List from Cobra Kai. Told him actress. Well, both Peyton Lists are hot because one was on Mad Men. She was one of the many Rodgers. It's just hey, it's just that it's not, it's not legal to say that both are hot. <laughs> now it's legal. <laughs> Before you are gonna you're gonna get some looks. Yeah. At, at, at best you're gonna get looks. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, Julie Strain. I haven't thought about her in a while. Yeah. Wait, last year because I was watching Beverly Hills Cop. Yeah, she she died what two years ago? Septus or like yeah, like two or three two or three years ago, right after the booster shots and all the crap. Remember COVID? Yep. Of course, there's no connection between that. Nothing to see here, folks. But she gave you know nerds hope everywhere because she was married to a dork shop looking dude that. <laughs> Wasn't she married to Kevin Eastman for a while? Too strange. I don't know. They, they, they know they dated. I don't think they ever got married though. No, she she was married to some dweeby looking dude. Oh. Prince had picked up. <laughs> no, I mean it's just. Oh. I don't think he was connected to the to the business or anything like that. No. Oh. As CJ goes, they find somebody outside the business. So. Yeah. But uh, anyway. Uh, Talia from Gotham. I don't think there was a Talia. There was a. Was there a Talia in Gotham? There was a Nissa Al Ghul. 
Natalia on, on I don't Arrow. remember Talia, yeah. I mean, it's been a while since I've seen Gotham. Christina, but, Christina yeah. Law is hot from Arrow, yes. I'm trying to remember. Uh, who was the... Art, what was uh, that? Who was the... Uh, on Gotham, the... Girl with the, the whip? The villain that was... That had... It was in every show for years. Played... Somebody, it had a, had a hot sister. Oh, I think the, the, you're talking Jessica, about the one that, Jessica Lucas is the actress's name. Um, if I remember on Gotham, the girl with the whip though was pretty. I think she's the one that uh, was bleeding the sirens. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. She was the one. Um, because there's the girl who was kind of crazy. She was like the Harley Quinn. She, she kind of messed around with um Barbara yeah, yeah. King. Tabitha yeah. Galvin. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That that. But she, Crystal Reed is the one that played Sophia of Yeah, she was in there well, too. Je Jessica Lucas was it always played like good girls until that. Until so, Gotham. Yeah. <laughs> and then she's like, uh, no, it can be bad. Uh, yeah, Maria Maria Alfred, was, I think was so She was hot. the only good girl in the remake of Beverly Hills 90210 or whatever yeah. that was. Show. Yeah. It was no, Melrose Place. Melrose Place. And um, um cuz the the girl that was um uh Dinah on Arrow, she was the Heather Locklear character. Hmm. And bombed so badly they brought Heather Locklear back. <laughs> I don't know if she was in the the thirteen uh, Evil Dead. I don't think she was. Oh, uh, that I that I don't know. I... No, that was a different girl. There was a uh, uh, Jane Levy. Or, she or was what? she was in. I think she's in the American version of Broadchurch. I said she was in. You know, I said Melrose Place, and uh, anything I'd ever seen her in, she was. You know, played you know good girls, and you know she was. Yeah. She was smoking hot as a bad. I, I can say, I'll say, I, 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 I see that, and I raise you, Aaron Richards. <laughs> oh, that's Barbara, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, she was, she was just stupid hot. <laughs> it's, yes, I don't, I don't know if she's anything other, other than after that, but I mean, like, yeah. Uh, I mean, Marina, Marina Bacharin, I think, was still the hottest woman on that show. I. I mean, I've been crushing on her since like yeah, Firefly. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're not understanding that where we're going with this. Stuff. <laughs> she, but she, she wasn't the hottest on that show. She was <laughs> the hottest yeah. actress, maybe to act on that show, but her character wasn't. Whereas, like you know, Barbara True. Keen, yeah, like, I remember, and yeah, like I said Tabitha, some of those cat suits and yeah. blah blah. But it was like you know, Marina. I can understand that. Didn't I? Yeah, you know, her character. Wasn't really sexual in nature because oh, yeah. Leslie Tompkins. You know where you know where that, right. uh, So you know what you know who the girl uh, Aaron Richards is from? Breaking in with Christian Slater. I've never seen that, so I don't. That TV series went, went for one season on Fox about Christian Slater. He basically would test people's alarm systems, hmm. and it, it's like you know, and he go in there and then yeah, uh, there was like a two. It was a very short lived show. I that's that. also, I believe that's also where Jessica Alba got her start. Maybe or, or, there, there was another Wait. actress. There's another actress that was on there that got, that got their start in that show. I think we're thinking of two very different shows now. Huh? No, was, um, no. Was on okay, on you had Michael Rosenbaum was on there. You yeah, know, that was Angel. Slater. No, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. Oh, no, that's Michael. I, I know, I know. Let me, let me go. I, Sorry. Yes, Angel was, was, was something different. I, I was correcting myself. It's Odette Annabelle is uh, got her launch on that series. Ah, uh, okay. Um, same with Trevor Moore. You should know who Trevor Moore is, right? He's the nerdy guy on CSI's the whole things. I don't watch CS. I watch NCIS. It's a very different oh, show. It's the same damn show. It's a very <laughs> different show. NCIS is a federal government agency. CSI is local and state. Yeah. But anyway, get it right. <laughs> <laughs> Who cares at this point? But uh, like I said, Aaron, Aaron Richards, man. Like I said, like of course because she's also crazy too. On the show, but also crazy in real life. Oh, is she? It's not much of a stretch for. Yeah, yeah, exactly. She's a, she's a, she's a swings one leg for the politics. Now, why well, why does everyone not. think that Emily Blunt is so hot? Emily Blunt is okay. Emily Blunt because she's actually like decent. Emily Blunt, she's okay, she's wait, wait, decent, but she's not hot. I mean, I don't know if I would say hot. I mean, I'm sure she's, 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 she's got that motherly hotness. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Like you're, you're putting her in MILF category. 
Yes. Yes. Did, Van, did you and say the accent that? factors yeah. into it a bit too. She's got that British accent. Yeah. And Aaron Richards is like stupid politically, if cartoonishly far left demeanors. I don't think she's as crazy as um, V, who I can't remember her name because that's so much I despise her. Kathy Gifford. Sorry. Uh, oh, Kathy Gifford. Ew. She's not yeah. that far crazy. But well, Kathy Gifford. Yeah, oh, Griffin. 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 Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I was Kathy Gifford. It's, it's, it's Kathy Lee Gifford. Remember yeah. 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 That's yeah, she's, she's probably Republican. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's, like I said, she's she's actually a pretty she's a Welsh actress. I mean, like, I know she was British, but uh, she's from Penarth, United Kingdom. Is that? This is Aaron Richards. Oh, she's oh she's not American. Didn't he's not American. No, she's British. Oh. She's Welsh. Same as but, uh, Christian Bale. I say when I, I say when you guys look at their social media sites, you, you instantly tell by the, the way they tweet out which way they go through. Uh, her first, her last tweet that she did was was basically uh, "Happy Pride." That was 2020. That was the last thing she tweeted. Mm. Oh, was, Aaron Andrews, that's the sports girl, isn't it? Yeah. Oh wow! You could bounce a dime off of that, can't you? We went from Aaron Richards to who? Aaron Andrews. Is is that the one that had a guy uh, uh, spy yeah. on her? Yeah. yeah that that's... she may or may not have uh, put up to it. Uh, Jay, what's half of five? Geiger mid. Two point five is is traditionally considered half. Of five. Eh, like I said, he gave he gave a Geiger a three point five, but I, like I said, I it's recycled. I've already read the story with him. You know, this time they put it in a Western setting, or or or, or not Western, but I mean, like in a guy moves a to town, bandits come rev it, he saves a day. You know, it's like it's it's nothing new. They're, not, they're just kind of treading water at the moment. Unless something big happens, they explore more, go on, he can or I said. Well, there's the, you know, I'm, I'm, is I'm, this guy on the level? Yeah. I mean, that's I, that, that's the yeah. twist yeah. this time. I um, want I want to know, and like, is Geiger, I mean, the biggest thing I got with Geiger Bears is when they started showing crossovers. When are we going to get the crossover events? You know, when are we going to start seeing more people uh, appear more with this guy? Like and it is. I mean, hopefully his attitude, basically his his uh, personality, becomes less boorish. You know, like I said, he, he comes off like Mister Freeze. So what uh, hell channel am I on here? I don't know. You're on the Geeky Puppet on, Show. You're, you're on the yeah. Geeky Puppet Show. What the hell is this doing on on Quick Pitch? Um, uh, what? Okay, long term. What are you most looking forward to? The for, Ghost for Machine Geiger. or the Millerverse? Millerverse for me. Um, I said so. I like the Ghost Machine will have better art, but I, I think the Millerverse will be more entertaining. Uh, they're talking about doing another volume of Nemesis. Last we saw, he was in a body cast. Yeah, I was, don't want that though. That, I, that, I know that would be I, a misstep. Um, many... for okay, what's the, what's the what's the book you're looking forward to in the Millerverse? That's or Miller World. Sorry. What are, what are you, what's the book you're looking for? I, see, I, I can't answer that because I wasn't really a fan until I mean I I, I started with the ne the second Nemesis series, yeah, and then Big Game was that the was that the yeah, series? Big crossover? Yeah, you didn't, you didn't read Nightclub? Oh, I, I read Nightclub, yeah, good book. But I mean, I, I didn't I didn't read uh, Ambassador. Ambassadors or any of those. So I'm just oh. looking forward to just like you. Know, I don't. I don't think I'm going to go back and get the, you know, the stuff I missed, but I'm. I'm pretty excited for what's to come going forward. I mean, ambassadors. Get, I'm kind of partially looking forward to it because now it's got uh, Kick Ass as yeah, American I'm, hero. I'll, I'll get the next series. Sure. We're they, were they going to go with that? Uh, Nightclub. We already know what's kind of what's kind of, kind of idea of what's going to happen. Their one buddy got jealous because he liked the girl and she, she didn't like him. She liked the main guy. So he created his own. It looks like he's created his own new pack, so that they're gonna come head to head. Um, I'm trying to think what else. I mean, uh, so that's ambassadors, nightclub, nemesis. Uh, he's announced he has a new nemesis. The new nemesis one that y'all. There's two unknown ones. He didn't say. Yeah. Yeah. There's two other ones that are. I would. I would probably guess just going off the way Big Game ended, 
Uh, I would say maybe Hus. Uh, is it Hus? Well, who's the big guy? Um, oh, oh, oh! The big guy that got the smiley face. You know, he had the guy who had the bear. Yeah, was it Hus? Huck. 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 Why am I thinking Husk? Uh, Husk. Thinking she's hot. And she's an X-Men. Huck. Oh. Uh, yeah, yeah. I was about to say it's a different universe. Uh, I think maybe Huck. Um, Maybe not Magic Order because he's already done so much Magic Order. I, so Magic but, Order, I haven't caught up. I've only read the first volume that we do. I've only read. The, I can never. I can't find the second one anywhere. My LCS has like three and four, but oh, never I have my one. ways. Uh, okay, that's right. Our, uh, so there, there have been four Magic Order series. There have been at least four. four he's yeah. done a lot of Magic Order. Mm. Yeah, I think uh, Joe's reading the uh, Omnibus for that. I think, but uh, and he's done two for Prodigy. I could see him probably doing another prodigy too. Prod, yeah, prodigy's got two. He's on done there. two for. But I uh, think because he's an, he was announced. I think he's one of them's gonna be Huck. I don't know what they can do. Yeah, I, th I, just, I think so. I still know what you can do with Nemesis at this point that you didn't already just do. Uh, make maybe him Nemesis guy. joins in because he's an even bigger threat. Uh, it's called Nemesis Rogues Gallery. So is so... it gonna be Nemesis versus other villains? Maybe. Because he betrayed them. Yeah. Five new series planned in 2024. Uh, the first one is Nemesis. So my thing is that with there's now Nemesis and there's now all these dog heroes. Maybe we'll get uh, more heroes popping up now. Maybe. Whole new team. Again. Yo, get uh, Jupiter's Legacy. Bring back like that that night like early golden uh early Jupiter's Legacy stuff in the 1920s. Or maybe never oh, says gun down this kid's parents. Now he wants revenge. <laughs> the yeah, um, was the mayor died right too? That town in Nemesis. Thought so. I think I can't he, remember. Or did he spare him at the end? Remember he left him locked in a coffin or something like that or something. Like that. I can't remember what it was. He was locked somewhere, but yeah. And just curious to see what's yeah. I mean, a Huck would be a cool new series, but uh, what, what we know, we know there's going to be at least another Bastards. There's going to be another night nightclub. Um, I would say I'm I, I want to I'm looking forward to nightclub. Now, over over I we have um, we just talked about Ghost Machine, Red Coat. That's the most intriguing book to me, but I also like. I like a Rook. Rook is a space adventure. That's the thing I would watch on the TV show. I could see Rook being uh, actually getting adapted into an actual show. The one with the the nuclear family with the like hologram grandma or whatever. Yeah, like, Rockefeller. Yeah, Rockefeller. Yeah. That's the one I'm probably looking forward to the most. What about Hi there's yeah. also Hi there's also Hyde Street. Hyde Street. Yeah. That one seemed to me like a very Breenish book. It has like a really Twilight Zone vibe to it. It's kind of like Creep Show in a sense, isn't it? Kind of. Yeah, I got that vibe. I, and I, I'll check it out. Then there was the one know. that was like the most often. I probably still check it out, but it was like the one where it's like a uh, little demon kid and little angel kid, but they're oh, yeah. families. That's 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 neat. That's that's interesting. I'll I'll check that out. Yeah, yeah. Breen Breen's on the cool kid list with me and Jay. Looking forward to the Rocket yeah. Millers. Zach, so, that is actually short for Zachariah. No, it's not. Okay. Uh, my, it's sure, my story for Zachary Banks. I'm, I'm happy to let you guys on the cool list, <laughs> but I've been here the whole time. <laughs> yeah, he's been he, on the cool list since before we were born. No, he's been on the cool list since the Ice Age. That's when he created it. Yeah, for, no. because he's Ice. Yeah, cool. Remember, remember, remember said, tell me everything that happened up to now. Well, first, the earth cooled, and I said, hey, can somebody get me a jacket? <laughs> Numbers only. <laughs> there you go. Uh, polar bears only. Let's take the polar bears. Now, speaking of good series, I just getting done with the uh, second uh, Moon Knight Omnibus that had the uh, Chuck Dixon series. Oh, nice. That was a good. I think that's the best, uh, one of the best series of Moon Knight. But the only problem is they, they, they took all their identities away. It was just Mark Spector. And Melina, they took away all the stuff, and no then Frenchie. gave no ex huh? No Frenchie. No, there's Frenchie. It was Frenchie Merlin. So because he, he was he wasn't pretending to be Jake or pretending to be Stephen Grant. He was just no, kind of no. They just they 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 took it. Away. They he was just Mark Spector. He got rid of the other two, and then he was still living at the same house and running the businesses, and nobody bothers to explain 
I mean, they, they don't explain how he got rid of him and why. So no I would I would go I would go back and read the Doug Mensch series that came before this because there's something happens oh. to him at the end. Yeah. And because yeah. it did so so that's why there's no no really no explains what's going on because. Well, there was they, also they, a Fist of Conshu series yeah. in between that and yeah. Yeah. Mark Spectre Moon Knight and yeah. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. Personally, I. And I know the older I get, the more I tend to gravitate towards the past, but I just don't think anything's come close to the Doug Mensch. Um, and he didn't write yeah. it all either. I mean, all of it. I mean, I know there was somebody that finished the series. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, some of the issues, but that series to me will always be the best. Yeah, it is. It's, you know, Chuck Dixon, I think is, that one is. Second. And, and I love Chuck Dixon. I mean, that's dumb. Breen bummy a cigarette. I'm, I'm all bound up tonight. Oh, wound up. Sorry. My bad. <laughs> Love to help you, Jay, but two days and counting. Nice. Really? Nice. That's why he's got the beard. He's stressed out. That's what it is. That's why well, I uh, um like I, I'm probably I may I may even end up, you know, hospitalized over how bad I feel. Are you gonna try the but, um, chewing gum method or the candy cigarette method? No, I'm done. I'm done. I, I said no, I, no, I, no, I, no, I, no, I, I no, well, I had it down to a little more than a half pack a day. Well, um, and so which makes, you know, it, four years ago when I had shortness of breath and had to go to the hospital, they kept me overnight and I figured out, okay, I've got a day in. I'm going to see how long I go. And I beat it. And so, yeah. that, but then seven months later, COVID hit. Yeah. And I thought mm -hmm. I was going to lose everything. So I panicked and, and, you know, reached for the crutch. Yeah. But, well, thanks, Jay, but I mean, I, I haven't accomplished shit yet because it's been two days. And but I will say that um, <coughs> that's, a, that's my neck prod. Tic -tac. These, these have been within arm's reach the whole time. Oh, oh those are cigarettes. Yeah. My, that's my next project. But it's I, I did well, keep drinking, and I've dropped like thirty or forty pounds already. Nice. Now, Dang. now, now I need to quit smoking. I've only been out twice for one during this whole thing, so it's not that bad. No, it's, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, uh, you know, I didn't quit because I want to. I, I realized I have to. I, I said it's whatever's, whatever is taking root there isn't letting up. And, you know, at some point it's, it, it's not worth it anymore. I mean, I, I said yeah. it, as much as I enjoy the 12 or so a day, I, you know, I, I kind of, I'm hoping I didn't wait too long. Cost, you know, something. Yeah, I mean, well, so. yeah um, it's, I'm kind of scared because they they said there was something on my lungs. It's nothing. They said it's not cancer or anything like that. There's some polyps on there. And also they said that I've, uh, uh, what is that, uh, COPD? Yeah. Say and that, yeah. so I've, I've got to stop, but I it's. It's the only thing that's keeping I, me from I, killing people. I, I you know, hear, just, I hear you though. I when I smoked back in high school, I did for about a year, and I enjoyed it. But then I, like you know, then I realized, wait, this is like I'm enjoying it too much. <laughs> but what made me quit was the price of cigarettes going up. Yeah, but you know, and I, I that's a good, yeah, that's a good incentive. I I've quit twice. I did it was like a month and a month and a half, and I got robbed, and the guy hit me with the butt of his gun, split my face open. So I had one to calm down, and it did yeah. it. And then I was there for two years out in L.A., and I started back up again. Did he rob you, or, or was the cop hitting you? <laughs> no, it was it was a, it was a guy who robbed me, and uh, then the cop said that I should have pulled a gun on him. And I said, by the time I had a chance, the guy was running away, and I would have had to shoot him in the back. And the cop's like, I don't see the problem with that. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I mean, you know, you might clip them. You know, if you miss, if you're that bad of an aim, if you're that kind of, that kind of knocked out loopy. But uh, yeah, I was I was just curious because some people like uh, I know uh, people that shop come they they quit cig cigarettes and ever since then they just basically just chew gum or they do or they have they do the candy cigarette or something like that a sucker so something something holding it in your hand you know yeah and I <laughs> I find it harder to quit smoking because I've tried a couple times since then to quit smoking than I did to quit drinking. Because I, I I did the I went in was in the hospital for a week because they wanted me to detox they did my month in rehab and I haven't had one since and it's been almost two and a half years and I've only had a couple of times where I've wanted to drink but uh, when I don't have the when I don't have the cigarette I, it's yeah I, I can't I can't quit 
<laughs> so MK says. He says, I thought of starting a pipe. They smell nice, but everyone tells me don't start. It'll ruin my voice. You already have a deep voice. If you start smoking, you are like Barry White's like a like a soprano compared to you. You know, Jeff, I think one of the reasons why it's harder to quit smoking than drinking is when, when it's time to quit drinking is when you realize that drinking is cutting into too many other parts of the day where it doesn't belong. Yes. And you realize that it's, you know, and then, and if you start again, that's, you've, that's like, oh shit, man. Yeah. You know, I, I may never get out of it. You know, I, I may never stop and, you know, I might be, they might find me dead in the gutter. Yeah. But smoking is around the clock habit. Yeah. And other than the fact that it's been stigmatized and there's a lot of places you can't do it. Whereas, I mean, hell, when I first started smoking, there really wasn't any place you couldn't smoke, yeah. including a plane. Oh, I, yeah. Yeah. But, I, remember, I remember being on the plane with that. I wasn't but, it. And if you fall off the smoking wagon, it's like, oh, man, that's not. But it's so, I mean, I said it's it, it's it's a lot harder to quit you know, for, for those two reasons, well, I think. I, and I, also, I, it's I, not going to cost you your job. It won't get you homeless. You know, you, you do, you drink. <laughs> You you can lose your job. You can lose your house. You can, uh, it's you know, kind of it's kind of like you, you look at yeah, yeah because you look at it, it's like it's smoking. It's not really you know. And it's like it's so easy to basically just like say like oh, I'm gonna quit that and then just like just keep going with it because like you said it's not gonna affect your job. You know unless you are having problems towards the breath that will affect everything. Yeah. But yeah, you know, my thing is like you can. But it, you the alcohol will cause you to be drunk and you especially when you start waking up and you, and you don't remember where you've been you know blackouts that's scary enough it is uh cigarettes you don't really see any effects at all until you start have coughing up blood or or, or uh you can't move as much because you're so short as a breath because your lungs are, are being affected you know and most people don't go to doctors because well one is expensive and two they, they uh, most people don't believe that doctors really do anything for you you know you get you get quack doctors and that really puts a bad taste in your mouth so i mean like and some people and the, th the third reason is that people are scared to see if they have anything you get open well, you up an age. Got a laundry list of shit yeah. yeah um that was my my uh well she's not in her 80s but like that's my that's my brother-in-law's mother she never wanted to go to doctor because she's afraid in her 70s they're going to find something you know, but she doesn't, you know, she doesn't smoke or like that, but still it's like, so like I said, it's cigarette is kind of like the easy thing to do. I, when I, the way, the way I quit cigarettes and because I would bum a cigarette when I went at the bars on the weekend, you know, I didn't buy packs. So I was the guy that bumped. So, so when people stop giving me cigarettes, that's not that bad. You know, the, the, I know people who only smoke when they drink Yeah, and you know, my, my drink on the weekends, so so and I and I, I kept it that way. But then I then I realized, like, I I, I it's with my what do you what do you do for the weekends? Oh, I go out the bar every weekend. It's like it becomes routine, and at the point where it's like, I feel like I need to go. My friends are like, well, you need to come out and drink with us. And it's like every weekend, it's like maybe you want to do something else in that weekend. <laughs> Jay, honest answer, zero. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, none for me. None for me. <laughs> well, that's like I said. I mean, I, I, I never, I don't think I ever learned how to inhale properly, which is probably a good thing. It probably could be a lot worse. Um, because I, I mean, noticed I'd watch people smoke and they, they would look like smokestacks coming out of their, you know, mouth. And mine would just be like little trickles. I don't think I ever learned how to do it properly, but. Well, you breathe in that and then you see them, but they blow out of their nose. So. But, you know, yeah. but like I said, it's just. It's a moot point now, because uh, like I said I I I don't think I can you know, light up again. So there's there's yeah I still have bouts of coughing and stuff like that, but and I, I'm not exactly That's, a runner as you can probably tell. When but, um, I said growing up as a kid, I run people had smokers coughs, and then they were you know, and I was like these are skinny guys too. They're not you know they're they're like in shape, but they were but they were constantly winded because they're smoking. Yeah. So, so that always made me was like. Yeah, maybe I should have get into this. And the whole pipe thing that the someone was bringing up with the pipes, I had a uh, a friend I went to school with. You know, his dad drove us to a place, and we're in his Dodge little Dodge Shadow. It's raining outside. He's got the windows up. He lights a pipe while the windows are up. I'm like, 
My <laughs> grand, my father's father used to smoke a pipe, and I love the smell of that stuff. And my, yeah. my dad, my dad smoked for years <laughs> until he had something with his, you know, a problem, and he ran his pack out on his mother's birthday and quit on her mother, his mother's birthday for her birthday. And that was when I was in high school. So it shows you how long ago it was. And he's had one cigarette at my sister's weddings. I've had one just to celebrate. So, boom, boom, boom. And that's that shows you some do you, do you fucking funny, willpower. Do you, know the, do you know what the willpower I had? I had I had an uh I had just quit cigarettes and I was walking on the sidewalk because this gas station's not that far away from where, where my friend was. And I was walking back, you know, for, and we were like, what's this? A sealed pack of cigarettes. Brand new pack. I, I was like, mm, like, it's free. It's right there. Like, it wants me. Like, I want to smoke it, you know? I still had my lighter in my pocket and everything. But I was like, I ended up just throwing it in the trash. But I was like, I'm kind of the person's like, you know, I, I don't like wasting things. But I was like, oh, yeah. it's, it's so hard because I, I really, I really I'm like, what? It's. See, and that, that's also and, it, and it wasn't me. it wasn't the nasty menthols. <laughs> that's also the thing with me. Uh, I'll be like, okay, I want to quit, and it's like, okay, I've got like half a pack. I'll do it once I, you know, get once I get my, once I get done with this pack. And the next thing you know, you're just automatically at the store buying something. Yeah, yeah and give me another pack of, you know, America's Brit Blacks. And, you know, it's like fuck. And so you're. Just, yeah. I've also had people who give me like they quit smoking. And you're like, and they know that they know that I'm not smoking. And you're like, here, you want this carton? Like so, <laughs> I'm like. I mean, I, I had sure. I probably had better part of two packs still. What I yeah, but yeah, you got I, better I, world power than me, man. I'm telling I you. just made the decision Tuesday night. I just I I I, I I I can't I can't do this anymore. Yeah, like I said, I might. I don't, I don't know how many books I'll be. And I've been buying the new books. I'm enjoying and reading them, but I don't know how many I'm going to hold on to. I might be selling a bunch again. You're just holding on to the back issues, like the sixties and seventies stuff, eighties. Like, well, that's because liquor or liquor stores were essential. <laughs> Sorry. Well, spe speaking of other things that are essential, sleep, food, no, sleep, oh, food. I, I haven't, I haven't eaten dinner yet, so it's... neither have I. Rest, yeah. I, 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 had, I had my first Pepsi in like forever, because uh, the the thing they gave me to give me Mountain Dew was all the seltzer water so he gave me a pepsi and said i don't like pepsi but it was okay pepsi's great cherry pepsi is better pepsi hey. zero it's what i yeah rest stuff. rest would be nice but anybody that's ever give yeah. i mean I, I quit smoking because i was coughing so much and now i'm coughing so much from like the first couple of days after you quit Yep. There's a yep. lot of coughing. And it's, it's your lungs trying to clear themselves up. Yeah. They're like, it's too much oxygen, old man. <laughs> uh, so the other thing is that I, I noticed that smokers, and this is the last thing about the little topic, is I've met worked with people that smoke so much that they, they had they did not know that they had BO because they couldn't smell themselves. Yeah. They smell like sell cigarettes and BO. Well, fortunately, when you when you cut way down, you you or you become far more aware. Yeah. Not that I ever you know, said, well, I, I, yeah, not that I ever went like days without showering. But I mean, you recognize <laughs> that stuff. So I, I mean, I, <coughs> you had to, you had to be like a real, you know, smoking, anti smoking yeah. zealot or somebody with a, the, the, um, the sense of smell of like a bloodhound to to even yeah. smell it at that point because when yeah. you're not smoking a whole lot you don't smell like an ashtray yeah, anymore this is a guy named greg i told that, that i smell like cigarettes but i shower every day so yeah, I, uh, oh, I said, some, some people i said that they can they can oh no jay i've been i yeah, I said i um hoping sooner rather than later and hoping i didn't do irreparable damage so, yeah. um yeah so i had a guy named greg i worked with at lowe's this is back in 2002 and we're going to, we're back in the warehouse and stuff. And I would on the trucks that should come in and stuff. And this guy was skinny as a rail. He'd always wear the flannel shirts. He had the big old beard and like, and had the glasses up, you know, he looked like he's right out of the seventies. Uh, and he smoked and, and, and one day, I don't know what it is, but he just felt like he wasn't showering anymore. He just, he just smelled the ripe as BL. got the point where they actually customers and other employees complained. He got reprimanded for it. Wow. Um, I mean, it is that bad. Um, 
And then I, I guess after I left Lowe's as well, 10 years later, I heard that he got emphysema. The guy is a smoker. He smoked constantly. You know, he'd have two cigarettes, you know, on his 15 minute break outside, you know, and then had whatever of his lunch. His lunch would just be him in his car, just one after another, one after another, one after another. And it looked like Cheech and Chong coming out of his little car. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, like I said, I, it's, that's the thing too. I was like, cigarettes don't last too long. That's a pain in the ass. They're over. They're overpriced for how little the cigarette time you get in there. Because you smoke it, and all of a sudden it's like, where'd it go? <coughs> Half its ash. That's why I never cared for smoking because I was like, it just felt like I was paying, paying too much for little. But yep. on that note, though, I think we'll uh, we'll nip it in the butt here, guys. Uh, haven't done so. Please click like, subscribe. Uh, you can check out the Ko-Fi link. You can also check out the Super Chat as well, too. If you want to use one of those money, all money goes basically going to, uh, well, paying for the books that we used to read on here and also keeping the streamer lights on as well. Uh, we enjoy having you guys out here. Thank you, Glinzer and MK, for showing up as well as Jay Lucian. Uh, uh, and uh, Marania uh, and Undead Quinn. I'm Marania, to- one of the youngsters. I'm trying to think. Was there anybody else that popped up here too? Um, Allow Louise, thank you for showing up. Uh, and Alan uh, or Lonnie Barrett on on Twitch, thank you for popping up too as well. Great seeing you. Uh, and uh, thank you to the panel for being here, guys. <coughs> Without you guys, I would not have a show. It would just be the Bankman Hour, and no one wants that. You know. You guys are my second half. You're my closing hour. <laughs> for your three quarters <laughs> literally <laughs> so thank you for being here and uh the papa team will be here tomorrow so expect us to be and friends tomorrow uh we're not sure we're reading but, but i'm assuming another x-men maybe it's fantastic four but thank you all it, uh no papa team tomorrow he is here tomorrow Oh, yes, you're tomorrow. So we're all in friends tomorrow. Oh, oh, oh okay. We got it. <laughs> Except for Zach. Zach doesn't want to be there anymore. I don't I'm, I'm and enemies now. I'm not and friends. You're a friend of me. <laughs> <laughs> and frenemies. I noticed that Zach's drifted off to the Monday night's readings. So, uh, uh, not this Monday. This Monday I have work. Uh, work appointments oh, came up oh, uh, early this we'll, year. We'll miss you because we started reading DuckTales. I know. I know. Nobody's gonna miss my Huey voice. Man, I hated my voice for that. I went back and listened to it. You, you, you know, awful. you know, Zach. There is a chance that Venkman might be addicted to reading. There's a small chance, right? Like he's. Is, is it is that bad that I'm hooked on phonics? He's now what my parents really wanted me to be when I was six or seven, just constantly reading. And uh, you learn. You know, my launch pad was pretty good. Days. Huey, not so points. much. So I, if you listen to that, guys, I apologize. That was not my best performance. Yeah, when it sounds like Gonzo. And, and it kind of did. It kind of did. It, it was like I a really scratch. bad Gonzo. Anyway. Yeah, and uh, yeah, so there will be readings all weekend. Because I am addicted to reading. You should be addicted to this channel. <laughs> I'm addicted to Helldivers. <laughs> That's my addiction right now. What is, is that? Is that a video game? Yeah, it's yeah, a video it's game. It's basically Starship Troopers with a little bit of Terminator. Uh, it's it's fun. Where the bugs say, "I'll be back." No, no, no. Terminator is in like actual robots. They have like metal skulls. They look like the T, whichever Wait, the, model they with are. The, with, with the the uh, insects now have exoskeletons. No, no, no. It's two different factions. The bugs are on one side of the universe. The robots are on another, and you have to fight them both. As humans, so why don't you just step out and let them go? That's a good point because we're humans, and the whole it's like the Starship Troopers parody like, we're addicted to the war machine and everything. So it's like, I'm doing my part. I'm doing, dude, why that's not a voice clip in there? I have no idea. Maybe they get sued for it because if they funny. had Michael Ironside in there, just do a narration. That I that would I'd be imagine. amazing. That would be awesome. I still want to hear it. someone say, Come on, you apes, you want to live forever. <coughs> All right, kids. Bye. Have a good yeah. night, and we'll see you next time. See you later. Later. Adios. Happy-